me think. Hello. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out how to end the other stream because I don't know. It wouldn't let me do it on uh, desktop. It would only let me do it from mobile. So I had to do that. Hi, Lori. Um, so just give me one second. Uh, if somebody is in the other chat, I don't know if it actually ended or not. Um, do y'all, are y'all still able to access it? Because if you can, that would be great. If you could tell people there's a new one. Oh, okay. Oh, it did end. Okay. Um, I just need to put the new link on Tattle really quick. Um, I don't know how to do the link. Oh, my God. Um, there's a new link. Okay, it ended. Um, okay, there's a new. A link on my page. Um, I wonder if I can see what the thing is. I don't know how. Um, oh, sure. There we go. Okay. Okay. One second. We're all good here. Uh, Tattle life. Sorry about that. Hold on. Um, I got it sent so I can post it there. There we go. Okay. Posted. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, dogs are doing great. Um, they're, I'm not sure where they are right now. They usually would be up here. Um, I had a lot of company in town this weekend, so... I'm doing laundry and doing my sheets and stuff. So I just threw the the dirty duvet on that bed in case they come in and you know, don't want to lay directly on the mattress. So that's that's kind of the big the big thing there that's going on in my life today. So and then this, I guess, would be the other big thing happening right now. Um, can everybody hear me? I don't know if I need to. Or, Anybody? Can y'all hear? Okay, sounds awesome. Okay, cool. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to jump in. Um, I went ahead and decided to do another one of these because it had been five or six months. People really liked the first one. And I was like, I know people had way more questions. And also it gets me back on camera because now we're we're starting to film again for real estate shows and it just more time I can get in front of the camera the better at this point because I don't I it helps me get my bearings back so I'm like well a live stream will will do some do some good there so everything's generally good that's happening uh in life right now and if y'all do have questions, feel free to share them, but um, general update. So moving to Orlando, which was the real estate company, where's Pete? I have, I have no idea. I I don't think anyone knows where Pete is. Um, I have ran into people randomly and they'll ask, you know, if I've heard anything from him. I have not heard from him at this point. It's been two years or a year and a half. I don't know how long it's been like that. I've had a direct conversation with him. So it's been, it's been quite some time. No one seems to know where he's at. So 
who knows? Um, but uh, moving to Orlando, as a lot of people knew, I sold my half of the company uh, to my husband. Uh, Pete ended up selling his half of the company to Ruben, which was one of our agents. And Ruben moved, and there was a whole lot that happened in that. And so regardless now, they decided to dissolve the company. So moving to Orlando itself has dissolved. I still do real estate, and we're just kind of relaunching now to um, obviously not moving to Orlando specifically. Um, um, we had all those... Uh, uh, we had all those videos pulled as well. That was part of what I guess Pete wanted done with that. Um, I don't really think somebody who doesn't own it should have a say, but that's the direction that they decided to go. So everything's been pulled anyway, because regardless, it needed to be pulled because Pete's in a lot of the videos and having that out there just isn't a good look anyway. And I certainly don't want to be associated with you know, having shows with him, uh, if people do go search and go find stuff. Uh, the other thing is that the email server was shut down for it. So, and the website. So if anybody did see one of the YouTube videos and decided to reach out, it would never get to me anyway. So there's really no point in having a bunch of videos that no one can actually uh, act on or do anything. Um, Pete may be bleeping bleep on Hollywood Boulevard for a churro. Oh, ah, possibly. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure what he's up to now. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah, he's doing his thing. He's out there. Um, I have not seen, I, I haven't seen any of the Diz, which I didn't watch the Diz when I was on the Diz. So I, I, I was there, I lived it. So I had no need to go back and look and watch the videos. I wish I had actually. So then I would have known how I appeared on camera or things I was saying, but I kind of just avoided watching anything with that. So I have seen bits and pieces of things, but not too much in the years. Uh, I've seen some of Panda's show and I like their format better, especially if you're going to do a Zoom format, but the Diz was never my cup of tea. I'm I'm a Disney food blog person, so it's a little more peppy and upbeat. So I and then while I'm not always the most upbeat person, I like that from Disney. I like to keep Disney light and fresh and you know fun. So that kind of sucked the life out of Disney for me. Uh you're better off without him and all the mental drama metal I think maybe that's gonna be mental drama. So that goes with it. Yeah, no, it's been much better. Um, I had, it would have been late 2022. I started going to therapy and I just started having all these just issues. I don't, I mean, my therapist said that they thought that it was uh, a form of like PTSD of some kind. And I really didn't think that could be the case. Cause I always thought that was limited to people going to war or people in these like life or death traumatic situations. But I can look back and see, you know, I was having a lot of the symptoms of what they described as PTSD and a lot of issues that I was having in general that were coming off that. And it just, it felt like a five to seven years, however long it was of just this chaos. And I think I just got so used to living in the chaos and being in the tornado that being out of it almost freaked me out more than that. Because, I mean, Pete's crazy, but he is a constant crazy where I always knew what I was getting. I know he's going to be upset. I know he's going to fight me. I know he's going to I know what the pattern is because <clears throat> you always think, why do people stay in these situations? Like, how do they stay? How do how, and I always was that way, too. How do people stay in abusive relationships? How do people stay in these ways but it's also you hit this wall where you're like where where would i go like i don't have anywhere else to go i'm now stuck with you know the debt that i got through him i mean i'm not now but like back then i was like i'm stuck with the debt that i got through him i've signed non-competes where i'm like it's not like i could go work for another competing company and at this point and in, in time then and i was like i really don't have anything going right now so if i leave what what could I do? So you just kind of get so used to it. I'm like, I don't have to face the unknown. You can just stick with Pete, I guess. But luckily now, don't have to do that. So yeah, no, therapy is good. I, I'm enjoying therapy. 
and it's helping me with a lot of things. I'm not the most, I'm not a very emotionally mature person. Um, I, I, I am in like a logical sense, but I don't feel my feelings and act on my feelings in that way. I just kind of bottle things. So being in therapy allows me to find healthy ways to not have pr problems like that. Um, okay. Tell us more about the Pete story to Italy on the, and the, on the cruise and Disneyland Paris. Also, you were saying something, what the house was for. Also, did you see that awful leech? Eric is back again. Um, I don't know what the house, Paris, you were saying something, what the house was for. I don't know what that question is, but um, so I can tell you more about Italy. Uh, so I actually planned when we were taking the trip over. Oh, about his house. Okay. Um, so when we planned the Italy trip, that was in direct response to... Uh, they were kind of like spiting adventures by Disney, essentially. And the they the the Diz is and Dreams Unlimited because they sell so much of it, they were they're able to tweak some of the routes that ABD lets them do because they're booking out the entire 50 slots or how many ever slots it ends up being. So they had actually uh Kevin had come up with a China itinerary that was different than Disney's direct itinerary, and Disney gave that itinerary to a uh, a competitor or some other travel agency and let them do the itinerary Kevin came up with before the Diz got to go do the itinerary. So they got like the social media stuff. They got the, the videos and posted everything about it. And Pete and crew were pissed, which I didn't blame them for being mad about that because it was kind of crappy on Disney's part to do it that way. So they planned, okay, next thing we're going to do is the Viking cruise because John and Kevin love Viking so much that we did this Viking cruise through Italy and we went a few days beforehand. And that was my first, that was my first trip with Pete where Pete ended up actually making it on the trip. So we had previously attempted to do Hawaii and he ditched me at the airport. So actually he ditched me before the airport, but in California. So um, I ended up going to Hawaii at that point by myself when I got there. So with Italy, we, I, I did actually take him on another, he, he wanted me to like book something for him, like a, a day trip or whatever. So I ended up booking a trip to Romania for the day. And so we just went like quickly overnight. So it was like three o'clock in the morning that we left and we got back like maybe about 24 hours later. And he was in a shape i will tell you at that airport because we weren't at the rome airport like the big rome airport we were at this other airport that was like a soup factory or something i don't know what it, lo it looked like this industrial plant and i got what i could get which was ryanair and so pete was like we got on that plane and you would have thought that he had been put in like coal mines or something like it was just the worst I mean, the plane was fine. It was like flying spirit and it had no problem, but he was, he was in a shape getting on that plane. He did not like that. And, but anyway, just with the cruise and everything, it was really, it, it was a really, really stressful time. And it was me and Pete, John and Kevin, uh, Rhino and his husband, boyfriend, I'm not sure, uh, Eli, and then Craig and Kylie were there. So it was a good chunk of us that were there. And it was really nice getting to hang out and talk to the fans. But Pete would get really upset with me if I talked to the fans. He didn't like me being in communication with them. And even at one point, he started yelling at me because I was talking to one of our fans, a couple that was from West Virginia. And he just came into the conversation and we still continue talking about West Virginia and we get back to the room and he, I mean, Pete just gets up and leaves. Like, he's like, I'm out. They knew something was up. They asked me, they're like, is he okay? And I was like, yeah, I think he's just like sick to his stomach. I'm going to go check on him, see what's going on. Keep in mind, these are people who paid to be here with us and got to the room and I'm like, Pete, what's wrong? And he's like, why are you talking about West Virginia? Why, why don't you talk about something I can talk about? And I was like, because those people were from West Virginia. So I'm talking about their lives. Like they, they are, they're updating us on who they are. And he, he's like, no, who cares about West Virginia? If they want to know something, they could be there on my trip and my thing. It was just like going off on me about it. And then he just started accusing me that I was like, in a, like trying to get in a relationship with them or at least for sure hooking up with them. And that was really when things just really started spiraling there. And he wouldn't come to any of the 
tours that were booked. So Herculaneum was one of them. And I was supposed to go to Pompeii and I was really excited about it, but I switched and went to Herculaneum because I didn't want to be on the same tour as the other employees with the Diz, because if they were being nice to me, or if it looked like we were having a good time and photos or whatever, I didn't, I knew the repercussions would fall back on them. When Pete eventually was okay with me, he's going to take it out on Rhino or Craig or whoever for being nice to me. So I just kind of pulled myself Herculaneum and ended up being cool though. But pretty much every day was like that. I mean, I would be off by myself or I'd be just doing my own thing. And that, that was really tough. Disneyland Paris was the exact same way. Um, I think we fought pretty much every day. You almost every day you people would see me just off alone. Again, he was accusing me of trying to sleep with our fans, which did not happen. I'm like, I'm not trying to have sex with anybody here. And, but it was, it was just constant that with that. And he would always, then it's like, Hey, I'm boxing you out of the room. So you're not, you can't stay in the hotel, you know, in the hotel with me anymore. And I'm like, where am I supposed to go? Like, where, where am I going to sleep? And then of course he kicked me out and then he'd be like, Oh, you went and slept with somebody. I bet. And I'm like, I, did not like I literally wandered around Paris by myself. What do you think I'm out here doing? So it was just a constant struggle with that. Um, let me see whatever. Uh, was that agency mouse fan travel? I think I remember. Uh, I think it was mouse fan travel that they that booked that that China trip. I'm sure it's if they're if they have a YouTube channel, then it'd be there. So I could see it, but um, oh, that's Jenny Lynn. Hi. Um, I just realized I hadn't read the name. Um, has Kevin and John reached out with an apology or anything? I have not heard from them at all. So I don't expect to hear from them. If I had to bet, I would think that me doing this and me coming up with all this stuff has just been a great annoyance more so than anything. I don't see them chomping at the bit to talk to me or be friendly to me or anything like that. There's no way. Um, Sean, can you walk us through the dissolution of moving to Orlando? In light of the Amex debt, surely that plays into the dissolution and Ruben's debt to Pete. Are you still in contact with Ruben? Um, so I'll give a little more backstory on moving to Orlando. So I got my real estate license in 2019. I started taking classes at the beginning of 2019. And I really did get it because I was over our DVC project and you have to have a real estate license to sell DVC. Even though I wasn't selling it, I was like, I should learn the process. And also if an opportunity opened up at that point with DVC store, I would be primed and ready so I could get away from Pete if if the opportunity should arise. But I kept it secret that I had the real estate license because I thought Pete would be really mad if he knew I went and got a real estate license, which he was. He found out that I was a licensed realtor and that I got my license and he was very, very upset. He fired me from the Diz for two or three days maybe. And, you know, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do at this point, but he did, he just didn't want me having any other outs or any opportunities to go somewhere else. So um, at that time, mo moving to the magic, which was the show he and Eric Gross started with um, helping people move to the area. Eric had been somebody that Pete was like romantically interested in. They met I believe on match.com possibly. And so they met somewhere along those lines. Um, Eric lived in Tampa and Pete was telling me all about the date that he was going to go on with Eric. And I was happy because I'm like, Oh, he's finally going to move on from me and get off my case. And he can, whoever this Eric guy is like, he can, he can go with him. And so Pete ended up going on the date uh, I think he went on a couple of dates with Eric in Tampa. Uh, not 100% on that, but they did start talking about, hey, since he was a licensed realtor, he could, Pete had wanted to start the show for like years and years and years and never could. And Eric had sold maybe I think two houses before and he had sold them like with his brother was the thing because his brother was an agent, I believe in Chicago. And so he had sold like one or two houses before. So Pete was like, hey, I'll put you on the show. We'll create the show. We'll do all this, which is like fine. Like they they did that. I wasn't even licensed at that point. So real estate wasn't in my purview. And when I got the license, I needed somewhere to hang my license because you I needed a brokerage to be licensed with. So I asked Eric, I said, hey, like, can you 
can I hang my license with your broker? I don't know how this works. Because if you've ever gone to real estate school, you don't actually learn how to do real estate. You just learn laws that can make you lose your license. So I was like, I don't actually know what to do. I just want to hang my license somewhere. So he said, um, yeah, sure. I'll help you out with that. And then I'm like, am I good? Am I, am I, is my license hung? And he was like, yep, you're fine. So flash forward six months later, turns out he, my license was never hung anywhere. You can't do that. Like you, I mean, I would have to be the one to like go to the broker, get in with them, all that stuff. And I just had no idea that that was the case. So he kind of left me high and dry there. And it really was, he just, he did not want other realtors involved. I would say it really was the, the best way I can go about that. And I say all that to say that's, that ended up being a narrative with Ruben as well, where they both saw things as like, this is my money. Like any client that I work, any client that I don't even work, that's my money. And if you work the client and you get paid, you're kind of taking my money from me. Whereas I just never viewed things in that way. Um, so that was kind of what happened. Um, Eric and Pete were having major problems all throughout that whole time. And uh, Eric left one day randomly and he was like, I'm out, I'm done. And so he left and he, I took over because I was the only person with a real estate license. So literally that day, like March something, like Mar March 11th or March 6th or whatever, that's the day I took over. So as I had posted in one of the tattle posts, when I was talking about Eric, I'm like, I don't understand how he's saying he opened magical moves or whatever it is seven years ago, because I'm like, you couldn't have, because like I literally stepped in the day you quit. Like, so there's no way that you made that seven years ago. I mean, it's semantics, but I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. It says right on Facebook, like the day the group was made. So um, it is a weird situation. So I, me and Pete started moving to Orlando. I agreed to split all the money with him 50, 50 across the board. I was always very good about splitting the money with him. I, I gave him half his money. He got his real estate license. I've always paid him that way. And I would have continued paying him forever. Like, cause I always thought, okay, I only got this opportunity because Pete has an audience and a reach. And I never even tried to renegotiate those numbers. I never said it should be less. It should be this. The only time it came up was he, his thing was he would pay for studio things. Like he was supposed to be the administration side of things and I'm the active real estate side. And so if he wanted to hire somebody to do some of his job, that's fine. He just needs to pay them. And he was fine with that because he needed a producer. Pete was supposed to produce. He was supposed to be posting on the website. He was supposed to be doing all these things. So then he decided he wanted to start paying Amy Krieger to be writing stuff. And he wanted to start paying fiasco to be the producer instead of him and all these things, which I told him perfectly fine with that. But that needs to come out of your pay because guess what? I have to do hundred percent of my work, but you only, you, you want me to cover other people doing your job, which eventually he did. He, he wanted me to start paying half of Amy and half of the producer and half of all these things that are his job to do. So we had some very knock down drag out fights about that because again, it came back to money and compensation. So he then brought on Drake who is, I, I well, I brought on Ruben because Ruben and I were, were best friends. And so I brought on Ruben cause I needed an agent. And then my other friend, Danielle moved down and she was originally the administrator. Pete felt that I was getting too many people in my camp, like in my army. So he really wanted Drake to be hired as uh, the producer. And I said, okay, you can bring in, um, you can bring in Drake as the producer. Drake got in and saw how much money he could be making if he were a real estate agent and he wanted to be licensed. And Pete was pushing that narrative really hard. He wanted Drake in, he wanted Drake as an agent. I allowed it. I mean, I put my foot down for a while because I said I didn't think he'd be a very good agent. I put my foot down, but Pete won out that battle because he would just lock me out of my email server and I couldn't help my clients. So he he wanted Drake brought in. Brought in Drake. And I, of course, wanted to train Drake because he's never practiced real estate. He has no idea what he's doing. And I told him, hey, like Drake, these are the steps you're going to have to take. These are the routines. And I will help you 
with as many things as you need. I'll walk you through everything. And Drake's response was, well, I'm not really a, he likes to fa- like try and fail. And then he learns from his own mistakes. And I said, listen, that's great. Like I'm one of those people too. I go in and just try stuff. When I started real estate, I didn't have a mentor or anything. So I had to learn everything by myself from scratch, but I made a lot of costly mistakes. And right now we're dealing with people spending the most expensive purchase they're ever going to make 500,000, a million dollars, whatever on homes. And this isn't a situation where you can make mistakes and go back and correct those mistakes at that point. Cause this is a lot of money. And of course, Drake went to Pete and was like, hey, Sean's not letting me do it the way I want to. Pete saw it as a hostile work environment because he's like, I can't believe you're not letting him, you know, you're trying to micromanage him. And I'm like, I am trying to micromanage at this point because he's never even sold one house. So yeah, I'm trying to take him through the same training I took Ruben through and the same stuff I'm going to have to take Danielle through. And Drake did not want to do the training. He did not want to do any of those things. And he ended up having several very costly mistakes that were very unfortunate for people. And one of them, case in point, when he first came on, he uh, got a new construction person. So they weren't going to close for like six months later. Very first thing, the woman messaged him. Hi, Drake. Like, uh, you know, you I've been assigned you as my agent. And I already know which house I want. I know exactly where it is. It's in Auburndale, which is like maybe an hour, I would say, from Disney. And it's in Auburndale. I already know the builder. I know the stuff. I just want a realtor to attach my name to it so they can go to Auburndale every now and then and get photos of the house for me. Do you work Auburndale? Is this something you're willing to do? He messaged back and said, yes, I'm absolutely willing to do that. 100%. Yep, I work Auburndale, all that stuff. Flash forward six months. I have no idea any of this is going on because he wants to do everything the way he wants. And Pete let him. And the woman closed on her property and then left a tried to leave this horrible review in our Facebook group, which on Christmas morning, mind you. So I'm like, you really got to be fired up to get up Christmas morning and decide to leave a bad review for somebody. So I, I called her the next day and I said, hey, what happened? She explained it. I went back and verified that what she was saying was the truth. I went to Drake and I told him, I said, hey, Drake, you have never once taken a photo of the inside of this woman's house for her in six months. She has messaged you to go out there and do this and you have not done anything with her. What happened? And he said, oh, don't worry. I'm going to be at her closing next week. And I said, she ain't got a closing next week. She already closed last week. So like she's already closed. So you completely missed this woman's closing. You did nothing with this client. You did nothing to help. And he said, well, I wasn't aware that if I put a new construction person under contract that I needed to still work and do anything with them. And I'm like, why would you not think you need to still do stuff? And he said, well, because you never trained me. On that, And I said, because you're the one who went to Pete and Big Daddy over here and said, oh, Sean's being mean to me because he's trying to make me work properly. So Pete, Pete took over took over your training. And then I guess Pete didn't train you properly. I thought you wanted to learn from your mistakes. I thought you wanted to do it this way. So he did that. Pete would not let um, uh, Pete would not let me in to do anything to help guide drake at all he was drake was had to be very hands-off to me and pete was supposed to be over his training so we had that incident we had another incident where a uh, a woman closed on her property and drake asked me he said hey how do i do you know how much it would be to hire a locksmith i contacted a locksmith and they said to get a, a lock undone it'd be five hundred dollars and i was like whoa five hundred dollars is way too much money i would not spend that kind of money on that i don't think we need to we need to do that so that's the last i heard of the situation so a couple weeks went by and he came to me and he's like hey i'm having a weird situation my client closed on her property and uh one of the doors was locked and now we've gotten in it and it's full of mold and i'm like what do you mean? Like, what, what are you talking about that? It's full of mold. Like, how could it be full of mold? And he was like, Oh, 
Yeah, like uh, it was a locked door and I just never had the door unlocked the entire time. I messaged the real estate agent, the other realtor and asked like, you know, where's the key so we can get in this room? And she never gave it to me. And now we closed on the property and it's full of mold. And I'm like, yeah, that stuff you come to me about. And of course he was like, oh, very defensive. He was like, oh, I didn't know I needed to come to you about that kind of stuff. I didn't know I need to come talk to you if there's a problem that's like being had. So it was just ridiculous. And everything was handholding. The woman's thing ended up costing $15,000 to get her mold remediation done. Was it my problem? No, it wasn't my responsibility. I was did not have to pay for any of that. I did though, like, cause I was like, Hey, I want to make this right for this client, even though it's not, none of it is my actual legal responsibility. I ended up having to pay and Drake did everything he could to get out of compensating that woman for anything. The woman was a single mom who had recently divorced. She was using her inheritance from her parents dying so that she could pay the down payment on the house. And now here she is stuck with this $15,000 mold remediation right out of the gate. And Drake is just kind of putting it all on everybody else except himself. And that was just his MO the whole time. So it was really frustrating. It was really difficult. And I couldn't do anything. So finally, I wanted to make an operating agreement with Pete on how to run moving to Orlando. And if y'all started a business, you know, an operating agreement is not even, it's not some ironclad thing where like, we're just literally putting the basic framework of, of what the company is basic, basic stuff. Like how do we sell the company? How do we, what do we do if it goes bankrupt? Like all these little things that go in there. I wanted to have a operating agreement made that was very basic. Pete would only agree to an operating agreement if I put in a clause that said, if Drake ever felt that I was trying to, that I created a hostile work environment, all he had to do was say, I'm leaving because Sean has created a hostile work environment, that immediately the entire operating agreement would dissolve and the entire thing would just go bust. And I'm like, you want one of our employees to be able to tell us that you, he doesn't like the way it's being run and can close us down. Like, this is your bright plan. And then Pete was like, if you don't do it, then you don't really want an operating agreement. You don't actually want to work properly. And I'm like, no, because this is stupid. Like, this is a stupid, stupid way of doing this. How can we give an employee the power to shut our business down? That's insane. So Pete eventually said he would sell his half to me and he would sell his half to me for a million dollars. Obviously, and that's where a lot of conversation came in on Tattle. If you ever go back and read those threads where people were like, oh, Sean's making a mistake if he's spending all this money and all that stuff. The, the deal was in the contract that Pete would still continue to make 50% of the money he already was making until the million dollar debt was paid. And once, once Pete had earned a million dollars, the whole company reverts to me. So I'm like, yeah, of course I'll take you up on that offer because my options either give you a million dollars over time and I get the company or give you a million dollars over time and you still have your half and you still collect half the money. So there was no risk. And all the clauses in there were like, even if I default on payment, I don't owe Pete anything. If the company doesn't continue selling, I don't owe Pete anything. So to me, I'm like, there's no risk at all for me doing this. So it was a million dollars. We get to the table to sign where I can take it over. Then Pete decides, changes his mind. He's like, well, I want $1.5 million. I agreed to that because I'm like, we will eventually get it. If it's a million, why not 1.5? Why not a billion? At least then I'm working towards a goal where I will have the, the business. And if I don't make any money, I'm not out anything. So then it was, okay, well, I want you to put up all your properties as collateral. Oh, and now I want $30,000 a month as payments. And I'm like, $30,000? We don't even make $30,000 a month. So he just kept pushing the goalposts further and further away. And that's where things skidded off the rail. So in one breath, he is telling publicly, I'm selling my half of the company to Sean. And the next breath, I'm saying, no, he's not. But it's because in that time, everything fell apart. So Pete went to Drake, which I was like, oh, God. Like, And he said, I'm selling my half to Drake. And I was like, that's literally the last. I might as well just work with Pete at that point. But he was just set. No, I'm going to go sell it to Drake. So I went to Drake and I said, hey, Drake, 
um, congrats that you're buying the company. And Pete was going to sell it to him for like 500 K or something and give him the same deal. He was going to give me. And I said, Hey, congrats, Drake, that you, um, are going to get the company. I've never been able to publicly come publicly come out and speak out against Pete because it would be bad for the business. But now that he's not going to be an owner in the business, I'm going to start telling all of these things because now I don't have a fiduciary responsibility to Pete because I don't own a company with Pete. So I'm going to start telling all these things and essentially just be a really unhinged, crazy person. So good luck, like dealing with me. And Drake backed out of the deal. He was like, oh, I am not getting stuck with Sean if he's going to be doing a bunch of crazy stuff. So I then went to Ruben and said, hey, Ruben, since I now got Drake out of my way, will you take over and you go purchase the company from Pete and get own the half? And he's like, but I don't want the company. I said, that's fine. Because when you get the company, you're going to reassign the debt to me because Pete's never going to put it in the agreement because Pete just doesn't think that way. And it wasn't in my agreement. It wasn't in Drake's either. So he's not going to add it to this agreement. So, and I said, you just do that. And in exchange... I will give you a much higher commission split than you currently get forever. Just as like a thank you for helping me get my company. He said, okay. He started going to talk to Pete and hang out and do all this stuff. Pete sells Ruben the company. And I'm like, okay, Ruben, it's time for you to transfer it to me. And he's like, oh yeah, weird thing. Um, Pete did end up adding, adding in an assignability clause. So I can't reassign it to you. And I'm like, well, what was the point? Why didn't you talk to me or anything? And he just was like really weird about it. And I was like, so are we going to like work together on this? And he was like, no, I'm actually moving away. But like, I mean, pretty much feel free to send me my half anytime you get any, you know, free, send me my money. And of course we had a big bawling out over it because I was like, listen, I'm going to sell my half to my husband because I'm not doing a hundred percent of the work like I was with Pete only to only still only make half the money. And now I'm just paying you instead of paying Pete. Like this isn't stuff that people should do. So of course I sold my half to my husband and left him and Ruben to run it. And at that point it was just a mess. Every, I, I tried to go off and start my own and at every point, it was a fight between my husband and Ruben about, oh, my thumbnails If if uh, for YouTube. If it looked too good, then like my husband must be helping me with it. And that was against their fiduciary responsibilities. And then Pete would get involved. So Pete was essentially like this puppet holder for Ruben, where he would just still be threatening me through Ruben, through my husband, back to me. So finally, I was like, you just need to kill this whole thing. Like, this is just so, like, oh, like, I, like, this is just so frustrating to deal with. And they moved. And it, it, it's just, it, it was all a very frustrating thing. At this point, the company has officially dissolved. Um, from what I was told between Ruben and Pete's contract, because I don't have their contract, was that Pete added in a clause that if the company dissolved, that Pete gets everything. He gets the Facebook group. He gets the YouTube channel. He gets every asset that exists. I said that's not true at all. I'm like, you can't just put that into your sale because there's another owner. My husband was the other owner. So everything can't just revert to Pete. And essentially at that point, I mean, the website disappeared, the email server got cut off, all that stuff. So I think in that contract, when Pete gave the rights away, when he signed the rights away, I think he kept some sort of fail safe or something in the back. So at this point, I don't know that for sure, but that seems to be the, the case. So at this point, I was like, listen, just dissolve it. We will not use the YouTube channel, pull all the videos down. And I'll just have to restart. So now legally, completely detached. I'm not with Pete anymore, not with anything. So now I'm just free to go do my own stuff. And I've already started filming the videos and yeah, getting getting it there. I am going to go back up and answer some of the other questions. But somebody just put, why do I feel like Ruben accidentally, accidentally mentioned the assignment clause in turn having the idea to add it? Um, that was my thought. That was that was my suspicion as well. And I think one of the things too with this entire Pete situation, my my whole saga with him, is a lot of people knew. Like, so my friends knew, my family knew, they knew things that were going on. I I did keep people up to date, 
And I can look back now and see how many people were okay with my misery because they benefited off of it. They got opportunities, they got jobs, they got things from Pete and gifts. And he would, cause he would love bomb these other people too. And to get close to me. And now I can look back and see that like my support system was horrible. Cause I would go to people and be like, Hey, look at these things. Pete text me, look at the way he's talking to me. Look at the way he's doing this stuff. I'm trapped. I'm like stuck in another country or I'm stuck in this place. Can someone send me money just till I can get home? And they would, but I would be like, I need to get out. I need to get out. I need another, I need a, a lifeline. And everyone would pretty much just say like, okay, well, I don't understand. Like, you don't, don't you understand how that affects everyone? Don't you understand how that would affect me? Don't. And I'm like, y'all know I'm like, you know what this guy's doing to me or whatever. And everyone, rather than supporting me in the situation is essentially saying like, take one for the team. And eventually I got tired of it and being like, I'm done taking one for the team, but I'm also shocked looking back at all these people in my life who are supposed to care about me and say that I'm like, you know, they have my back and they have my word and all this stuff. We're not in my corner at all. And I just couldn't see it. So it, it didn't, I knew Pete was crazy and I never was gaslighting me, but I think the people around me were ga like successfully gaslighting me into staying because they actively were like, well, no, well, he's a good guy. He's good at heart. He's really generous. And I'm like, okay, but he's also like cutting off my funds and like, molesting me like what do you want me to do at this point like I, like how how can y'all support him and they're like you're overreacting and you're this that and the other so it was really more so the people surrounding me made me feel like i'm too much like i'm being too much in the situation but now i can look back and i'm like people are not people just were not looking out for my best interest they really weren't they were looking out for their best interest and it, it sucks that that was the the situation in the case, but let me go back up really quick and see. Um, um, how dare people not talk about me, Pete? Yes, that really would. That would actually happen. We would go to the parks, and if Pete didn't get stopped the minute we were out of the park, first thing you do, pick up the phone, call Craig, and scream at him. He would scream at him and say, "I no one recognized me in the parks. No one came up and talked to me. No one did any of these things with me." And then. Craig was in for it. Like if Pete didn't get recognized, he's like, you're my producer. You, you I should, people should know who I am when I go places. And I'm like, you are crazy. Like, I can't believe this is even, uh, like, I, I can't believe this is a thing. So, uh, let me see. You should write a book. Are you also still in contact with Craig and Rhino? Um, I've actually never even had Rhino's phone number. We've never talked outside of work. So I never, I, I haven't really ever had any connection with them. Craig, uh, not really. I ran into him at um, like outside Target maybe four months ago, maybe. And I think that's really the last time I talked to him. It was pretty brief at that point, but we don't really, I never was like, chummy with everybody at work anyway because i was just trying to keep everyone away from me and away from pete like because anyone who interacted with me it just was a lightning rod for pete um just wondering what the tokyo trip was like and do you still think tokyo disney resort is better ran than the u.s parks including paris yes i do still think that tokyo disney is the best run park i love what they do there they do so much creative stuff and it, it just it's amazing like if you haven't been you you really should consider going because tokyo disney is is amazing and yeah tokyo trip the tokyo trip with pete was one of the better trips but he he just he loosened up a little bit there where he wasn't so bad but there was like two knockdown drag out fights at one point so we definitely it was more of the same of hey you're you know, being disrespectful to me or you're being however. And eventually I did just get disrespectful to him because I was like, being nice to you doesn't work. So I might as well be mean because I can't be nice. So I got to be done with that. Uh, any news if Pete went to jail or got arrested? I do not believe so. It, it's all would all be public record if he did. So um, but I don't think so. Um, Follow-up question. Do you have any other stories similar to Mary from Publix where Pete swore he was close friends with someone, but they were a stranger? I wouldn't say more of that. He just always felt anybody who gave him any time, any attention. Like what I was saying with 
with Ruben getting the the company from Pete. I mean, they went on like two dinners and all of a sudden Pete shifted from anyone who's my friend is evil to being like, oh, Ruben's completely in my corner. Same thing with my husband. I mean, my my now husband who like Pete blamed and sent me long messages saying that my husband stole me from Pete, like that, that he manipulated and stole me from Pete. They went on one dinner, one. And Pete was like, oh, we're super close now. And then would go to the dinner and trash me to my husband. And then was like shocked that my husband wasn't, you know, which I told my husband, I was like, hey, listen, whatever he's got to say about me, just deal with it. I don't care what he's got to say. But I'm like, how can you sit there and think that you somehow have won over my husband's loyalty to you when I'm married to him and one dinner, that's all it takes. So he just, he really, really, if you just say one nice thing to Pete, I, I swear at this point, if Pete came back in and I went to him, I was like, Hey, like we, uh, I, I support you now or whatever. He'd be like, Oh, really? Great. Like wonderful. So he's just, he's crazy. Um, comment check, please. I'm not. Okay. Um, any stories about Fiasco and why he left so abruptly? Um, Fiasco had been on Pete's radar for a while to get rid of, and um, Pete was mad when Fiasco... He gets mad if anyone has a life outside of him. So whenever he, things started, I mean, Fiasco was, you know, obviously the one getting love-bombed by Pete. And over time, I mean... Fiasco didn't want to go to dinner with Pete or didn't want to hang out with Pete with all his free time and all these things and started standing up for himself. And then Pete's like, well, you're supposed to be my right hand man. And sounds like I don't really need you anymore. So he had been after Fiasco for a while. He just needed a replacement for Fiasco, which I'm assuming is what Panda was supposed to be in that case. So that's, that, that's kind of what happened with, with Fiasco. Um, uh, how he kept all these shows up and running. You can tell how little Pete did. He really, really did like super, like the least of anything. And okay, let's see. Sean, can you talk about your Alani trip? I can tell from that video you were, you were over Pete. You seemed so happy. How does it feel that you literally save countless others from going through this? The Alani trip, the, the one that I took, or the very first time I went, I was supposed to be going with Pete uh, and Pete got mad at me at Disneyland when we were there and decided to not go. He decided to not go on the trip, like the morning of the trip, like I'm in the car going to the airport to get on the plane and Pete's like, I'm out, I'm not going. So I just still ended up going myself and I was there by myself uh, for the first bit, and then after a day or two of me being there, I, like, called up all my friends and was like, hey, anybody want to come, like, spend time with me and hang out with me? Like, that would be great. So I have this room, and I'm here for, like, eight or nine days, and I just don't have anyone to talk to or anything now. So um, my now husband actually was the only person who was available to come out there. So he came to Alani, and we hung out there and spent time at the park. I mean, I spent time at the resort, and that was pretty much it. And then I did actually end up going with Pete at a later date uh, when we were doing Tokyo Disney. So I went with uh, to Alani with him and with Steve Porter and Michaela, uh, which is Steve Porter's wife. So we went then. That was a pretty miserable time. Um, I actually got along pretty well with Michaela, though. I mean, I liked Steve fine, but like Pete was he was on it like that was that he he was a lot to deal with he's a lot to deal with on every single trip like it's never a good it's never a good time he's always a lot um were drake and pete intimate to your knowledge no i don't think they ever were pete did uh, drake did move in with pete and that was kind of how they got so you know entangled because like Drake was living with Pete. So they would bounce a lot of ideas off each other and all that stuff. So I understood with that, but Pete, of course, Drake became Pete's new obsession at that point. So it's like, I'm trying to run a business successfully and you're just sticking random people in, which kind of made me feel for John Magi because that, I, that has to be what Pete does to him too. And John's a little more passive than I am, or maybe not passive, just content to like, make his money because he's like i mean i have a good life so why would i rock the boat this hard and he was a little more content with that i believe but 
uh, yeah, I, I mean, but Pete would just put people in. He's like, yeah, Drake's coming on board and he's doing whatever I say he can and you're going to pay him this. But the same thing happened with me. I mean, Pete was like, hey, Sean's going to be a travel agent. John, like, and he's going to be, and he's going to be my eyes and ears and he's going to be all this. So Pete just kind of barrels his way into things rather than taking good talent and putting them where they are. Cause he doesn't really recognize talent. He more so recognizes, Oh, you like me. And that's, that's pretty much it. And that's, that's all he needs. So for him, he thinks, Oh, you're a good worker because you're not a good worker. You're just a really loyal soldier. And that's what he thinks a good worker is. Um, so sorry, Pete is short, is so short sighted and petty. Yeah, he is. Um, also curious what happened with Fiasco's abrupt departure. Okay, I answered that. Um, so many layers to the story. Yep, sure, it was quite a time. Um, were was I at any point legitimately attracted to Pete? The cigarette breath and gaudy jewelry is a complete turnoff. It is, I mean, it. There was briefly a time, and because you'd have to know, my me and my now husband, we were together when I met Pete, but our relationship was very much on the rocks. We, I was ready to move on from that relationship anyway, and so we had been a little bit, it, it had been four or five years of us being together, maybe three years, something like that, and I'm a couple years older than my husband, and so I think at that point, I was maturing into I want to start a life. I want to start paying down debt and I want to do this stuff. Whereas he was still in kid mode to a degree. And I was like, Hey, you know what? It's time for me to pull the trigger. It's been years. So I need to be with somebody more mature and someone that can, is going to help me make money and help me develop our life and pay bills and all this stuff. Cause I had to learn how to do all those things. And Pete came into the picture at that point and he you know, was successful and successful in Disney. And I've, I mean, he's not my type or anything, but I also was like, you know, I can try something new. Who's to say who, who you could be into and who you like. And he was very like kind at first and he would lavish you and all this kind of stuff. And so it really is hard to feel not, into someone. I wouldn't say I was like sexually attracted to him, but I did like the mix of, he had a lot of confidence, which outwardly he had a lot of confidence. He's a mess uh, the other way around, but um, he had a lot of confidence. He had a lot of money, which never hurts the situation. He also had a very successful business and was a business entrepreneur in Disney realm, which is like what I love. He loved traveling, all that kind of stuff. So I was like, Hey, you know what? Like there's enough in here that is attractive and he carries a conversation really well. So he is someone you can talk to and really bounce ideas off. And he's also somebody, I will say, if you are his friend or dating him or whatever, as wild as he is to one side where it's just unbearable when you need something from him or when you're just like, Hey, I need support. He is somebody that you can call at like three o'clock in the morning and He's just, what can I do for you? Let me get you something. Let me help you. Let me figure out what I can do. So it was hard to passing up somebody like that when I was sad leaving my other relationship that seemed to have just hit a wall. And then here's this person who is showering you with gifts and money and love, but also being a very understanding person. It's just, you can only be that way for so long. And then the real you kind of comes creeping out. And uh, once his real self came out, I was just too deep in for me to, to be able to back up too much. So that was really the, that was, that was really the issue. Um, I don't understand how that's Craig's fault. Oh, with the, yeah, no, no, no one recognized him. Who knows? Like, um, do I still talk to Fiasco? Uh, no, I haven't heard from Fiasco. I, when I first started posting on Tattle, um, he did reach out to me at one point and just said kind of like, uh, hey, thanks for revealing like the stuff that's being revealed because, you know, I'm glad somebody's getting it out there and how awful the experiences are. But um, that's the last I talked to him. So that would have been what, a year and a half ago, maybe. Uh, yeah, like a year and a half ago. People knew who Pete was. People just didn't like him. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you either some people did actually like him and then some people just didn't know him enough. And once you did, once you knew the real him, it's, it's all over. So it's a mess. Um, did fiasco leave on bad terms with Pete? Pete 
seemed weirdly passive aggressive towards him. I don't know. I always thought he was just super rude to Fiasco. I, I didn't even think he just always put him down. Like every show he would after the shows. Um, if Pete was, I mean, if Fia, he would complain that Fiasco was too cheap and didn't have enough DVC points and did all these things. And I'm like, well, okay, he's spending his money how he wants to spend his money. Fiasco is very, very frugal, I guess would be the nice way of putting it, but it's really no one else's business if he's frugal, but Pete just always really had a problem with that. And he used the show a lot of the time to put Fiasco down in my opinion. And just everything was a joke about him and a joke at Fiasco's expense and how stupid Fiasco is and how all this stuff. Sorry, I was getting a phone call. Um, so I felt like he was really rough on Fiasco. Um, Sean, you cute and why are you single? I'm not single actually. Um, I've been, I've got married in 2022. Um, let's see, Sean, we're all so proud of you. Oh, thank you. Uh, Fiasco had the personality of a toaster oven anyways. I don't know what that means, but, um, we were never close, so I don't know. Um, uh, is anyone attending the hearing on February 26th? It's actually going to be a uh, zoom call so i'm assuming people will i'm i'm probably not i expect to get updates from tattle on it but i don't really have a need to to show up to it i don't know what they're gonna do but i don't know like whatever i i don't know what's happening uh with with his lawsuit i don't i mean and obviously from what i've what i've seen is from the court documents that are online based on my reading because i'm not an attorney so i don't know um Pete seemed to have at first requested a jury trial, and but now he's making the argument that it should be going to arbitration and that they wouldn't have a trial because an arbitrator, which probably don't know, that's essentially like what Judge Judy is. You go to arbitration and there's a mediator and they're kind of going to pick which one, um, which which side's the winner, rather than it being a jury that's going to going to come up with a decision. I don't think an arbitrator is a good move for Pete because at least if Pete could get in front of a jury, he could say like, I was in rehab, I was doing these things and I have a history of, you know, issues with drugs and alcohol. I'm the only person who's depending on, uh, who's caring for my mother because he does pay all her bills and her upkeep and stuff. So I think to a jury of regular people, uh, there's a lot of like heartstring pulling that could go in there, but I don't think in front of an arbitrator, like they're going to care with that stuff. So I really don't, I don't know that that's the best plan. I think if I were him, I would want to keep the jury trial because I think I'd rather get in front of 12 strangers than I would to get in front of somebody who's seasoned and knows what they're doing and is a, a professional in that field. So, but I don't know. His narcissism allows him to believe that anyone would pick him first over, yeah, including spouses. It really is that thing. I know when Steve Porter worked at the Diz, it was a big thing towards the end, especially because Pete genuinely expected Steve to pick him over his wife, Michaela. And he, Pete would get really, really upset when Steve wouldn't come to dinner. And I'm not talking like, Oh, wouldn't go to a work thing. I'm talking wouldn't stay till 10, 11 o'clock out with Pete, just hanging out and being buddies like that kind of stuff. Then it's like, Oh, you're not, uh, you're not actually my friend. So I'm suspicious now. And then of course, Steve would just, be a wreck, which I understand because I got yelled at a lot by Pete too. And so does everybody. But I mean, he's such a nice guy that it would just really stress him out. And then he's like, and then he's got his wife at home that obviously wants to spend time with him too. So he just, he puts people in weird spots with that stuff. Um, there's a zoom link for the hearing. Okay. Uh, he did a tube live with you on that solo trip. Oh, Adelani. Yeah, he did do a live with me. Uh, I don't remember what it was that we talked about there, but one time we went to Morocco, uh, no, not Morocco, Turkey, and we went to Istanbul. And so he did a live show, like a solo show from Istanbul. And for some reason, he thought that I was trying to get in on his live like on his single show or his solo show. And that turned into a really big fight. Whereas in reality, I was just like sitting and waiting on him to get done where I wasn't trying to interject or be part of that conversation. I just was like, Hey, I'm here in this hotel room with you and you're recording a show. And so I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do. So I just like 
sat there quietly while he filmed it. So I'm like, I'll just sit in silence, I suppose, while you're doing your thing, which is okay. What happened with Steve? Did he leave on his own? Panda didn't seem to last long. Do you know what happened? Um, Steve left because uh, his wife was ready to move back to Salt Lake City or wherever they're from in Utah. And he want, she wanted to move back and he went with his wife. So because they won and now they have a kid, maybe more. I don't know. But they do have they went to get their life started. So that was pretty much that. I don't know with Panda. I mean, me and Panda didn't overlap that much. It was more so he would help with moving to Orlando stuff. My guess is that Panda recognized how crazy it is and how crazy everything was getting with Pete and was like, I need to get out because he had his own show and stuff. And he, he already had an out before he came in. So I think that's the problem when stuff hits the fan with Pete you're already trapped to a degree, but for somebody like Panda who already has a path out, he can leave. Like that's, that's not as big of a blow. Whereas somebody like Craig or me, when I first got there, I didn't have anywhere else to go and I didn't have the, the setup and establishment of that. So I would guess that's what happened with Panda. And then even with Fiasco leaving, he is like a military vet. So he does get some money that way. He already, he has like a pin, like a Disney pin channel. So I know he makes some money on that. So he also had some, some options. Um, to what extent was Pete hiring with his willy versus hiring someone who worships him? Um, I think it's pretty even. I mean, he definitely you worshiping him would be a bigger plus than him being into you like attractive wise, but he, I mean, both can play in. So it really, it really depends with that. Is Pete still in Orlando or did he go back up to New Jersey? I have no idea. I assume he's still in Orlando, but I don't know for sure. I would imagine he's taking some trips back to New Jersey, but I don't know what his money situation is. I mean, we know what the lawsuit is for the million dollars, but I mean, at this point, he still is half owner uh, or one third owner of Dreams Unlimited Travel. And he still is the full owner, as far as I know, for Werner Travel Media, which is the Diz. So I don't I don't know for sure if he's not making money because I don't I mean, if he owns those companies, he does have rights to to money. But maybe they worked out their own stuff. I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, I always thought that it was creepy that most of the people he hired were attractive younger guys. It was, yeah. I mean, yup. Yup. Um, uh, are you still doing mortgages? I am still doing mortgages actually. So I got my mortgage li license as well. Um, so I sell houses and can be the lender for houses. And it does help me to keep costs low for people because if they use me as the lender and they use me as the agent, then there, I have more money wiggle room to play with to like get your rate down a bit more or however, compared to other people who are doing each separately. So, you know, they can't dip into their stuff, but if I need to give up my mortgage money that I would make for writing the loan in order to get your rate down to a manageable thing, I'm still going to get paid on the, the real estate side. So it, it's easy for me to say like, Hey, I'll do your loan, but just cut that. I won't make any money on it. I'll give that money towards your, your, uh, interest rate do that. So it does work a little bit that way. But speaking of, I'd forgotten this. So back when I had said with moving to Orlando that I would give 50% of the money to Pete, Pete wanted that across the board. And that was the part that I didn't realize. So when I went to school to get my mortgage license and could start writing mortgages, Pete said he was entitled to half the money. And I was like, but if I'm literally writing the mortgages and I'm doing all this stuff. Like, why would you get half the money? This is like a separate business that I'm doing. And he's like, because that's in the real estate realm. And I said, okay, so, uh, what I said, what about my personal house? Cause I have a house on Airbnb and I was like, Oh, what about my personal home? Do you expect money from my short-term rental? And he was like, absolutely. That's, that's real estate. So if you're making money in real estate, you owe half of it to me. And I'm like, so my personal home that I Airbnb out, you think that I should compensate you for that? Like you think you owe, I owe you half the money for me running my own business on the side. So if that was the extent, like that was how far he would go with this stuff. Crazy. Uh, what's your last meal death row style? Uh, 
honestly, I love Reese's. So I probably would just eat as many of them as I could till I was sick. And that would be my, uh, that would actually be my last meal. Cause that's my sweets are my Achilles heel. So I'm, I have a very big sweet tooth and to lose weight, I've really had to cut out sugar as much as possible, which was not easy to do at the beginning. Uh, did Pete meet your family? How was that like? What, what Pete, a good lover, uh, Pete did meet my family. Um, Pete, um, Pete met my family several times. Um, my mom very much liked Pete um, and made it a point to go to dinners with him whenever she was in town to let him know, hey, I'm coming into town. Um, my mom got very close with Pete's mom as well and would text her and hang out. And um, I don't get it, but like that... She, he did meet my family uh, a number of times and um, actually went to Disneyland with my mom as well. So they did um, a few things together and they were planning a cruise together and all this kind of stuff. So at this point, I know she was frustrated because she's like, hey, when all this went down, he doesn't talk to me anymore. So he never really was my friend. And I was like, no, he never really was your friend, of course, because he was just trying to get close to me. And she's like, I recognize that, that he was just trying to get close to me. So he wasn't my friend and all that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really think you should want to be his friend either. But like, I don't I don't understand that. Um How's everyone finding the court documents online? You would have to go to the Orange County, Florida Clerk of Courts website, I believe, would be the, the place to go. So if you just Google Orange County, Florida Clerk of Courts, you can you can find it from there. Uh, why did the Disneyland show get cut? The Disneyland show got cut because it didn't make financial sense it, to a degree to run it because Pete wanted to be heavily involved in it when in reality they should have just let people out in California run that show. But Pete would always say like, if he's not on it, there's, there's not going to be a draw. It's not going to do enough. And ultimately the goal would have been do Disneyland content and then pass people to dreams on them to travel so they can book Disneyland. And I'm not saying Disneyland's not profitable in that way. It's just people don't take as long of trips to Disneyland. They're not going to stay on property as often because there's only the three resorts or at the time there were just the three. There are the good neighbors, but it ends up being a little more complicated booking the good neighbor hotels. I, I, I booked a few people to Disneyland, but it really wasn't that manageable. And I think from what I remember in maybe it was 2019 or 18 when I was with the, the travel agency, I think they only sold about half a million in Disneyland packages and compare that to like Disney cruise line that they sell 40 million of, or how much ever it is. Like it's, it's just every other product. So outsold Disneyland so much that it's like, well, what are you really making off this? And what are you really getting out of it? And plus Pete would be flying out to California all the time. So he was spending a lot of money doing that. So I think that's a big reason that that show got cut. Uh, I really hope Pete is on the Zoom. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he has to be. I, I don't know exactly how that worked. They always used to say that Bob Varley was in on the joke when they were teasing him. Knowing Pete, do you think that was true or was he horrible to Bob too? I actually, I, to this day, don't know who bob barley is like i don't i mean i never watched the show so i've never seen him i know i know the studio's named after him so like i that that's literally the extent of my knowledge on on bob barley so um nothing at all against him because i know he like passed away and all that stuff and apparently was very popular but i wasn't a diz fan before i started working there so i don't know anybody from before my time Except, I guess now Dustin, but and Jenny Lynn, but let's see. Um, bucket, great question. Popcorn bucket. Oh, oh, with that. Okay, with Bob Barley. Um, I was re-listening to the old episodes. It he was definitely not, and it, it was rough. I I'll take your I'll believe you on that one then. Allegedly, Pete's dad wasn't a nice man either. Thank you for answering all of our questions and for being so transparent. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I heard the tales of his dad. That wasn't a good. He was doing some not so good stuff um, that was happening. Any word on what happened with Pete's former fiance, Gio, hoping he got out of Dodge? I don't know. Okay, so here's my thing with Gio. 
so again, like I was telling you, my my husband and Ruben would go to dinners with Pete and talk, you know, because of the moving to Orlando deal going through. So my husband went to dinner with them and asked, oh, how's Geo? And G and Pete was like, I don't know. I haven't seen Geo in like a long time. And he's like, oh, are y'all still not engaged? And Pete's response to that was, yeah, we are, but they have him, his job has him work. Cause I think he works for Activision or Blizzard games or something like that. He does something with video games. And they said that his job had him working in Boston, I think. Yeah. Had him working in Boston. And it was like so top secret that Pete wasn't, al- no one was allowed to even come to Boston. And also he wasn't allowed to leave Boston like Geo to go out for fear of like game information leaking. And I was like, my husband was telling me this and I was like, does Pete believe this? Like how could, who would believe that? Like there's, I mean, it's such a transparent lie that that's what's going on. I could see if he worked in the secret service or something like, oh yeah, we can't tell you your location because we have you in Afghanistan or Syria or something. But I'm like, this is a video game company in Boston. Like I would like, I was like, this man clearly just doesn't want to be with Pete and has come up with the worst lie that Pete just believes. Like, who would believe that? That you that why can't you go to Boston? Like, who couldn't go to town that somebody else is in? So I was just like, I cannot believe he actually buys that. I wouldn't, I, it's crazy. But yeah, um, he did. He did, Geo did end it with Pete from what I was told. So eventually Pete, uh, Geo came and got his stuff and that was, that was it. Sean, do you think Pete would dare show his face at any of the parks again? I'd say no, but also he's crazy. So like, I mean, he is a narcissist. So, I mean, I could see him eventually showing his face at the parks again. I just don't think so um yeah i don't yeah I, I i don't know i could see him doing it i could see him being bold enough to do that someday uh i'm from i'm from kenya in east africa okay you're not reading my comments maybe my services are not needed here i didn't see any of your comments um yeah pleasure it's also a pleasure to meet you Let's see. Does Pete really know Josh tomorrow at all? I mean, no. Like, I mean, he does know of him and they've had meals together a few times, but I mean, it's no different than Mary from Publix. I mean, he had like, he, he thinks that woman knows him, but like, he doesn't know Josh tomorrow. I, I don't think I, they might. I know Pete had his phone number maybe, but like, not too much goes on there. I mean, Pete was always trying to push Josh tomorrow to run for like governor of California as a thing and kept saying like he, he would have Pete's like full backing and support if he did. So I don't think Josh tomorrow is going to want Pete's backing at this point if he ever did. So yeah, based on in light of everything, I don't think that's going to work out. Do you know why Denny left? She always seems so nice. I don't remember the, the guy's name, but at, but he would do some of the moving to Orlando videos. I think he was a cast member. Why did he leave? That was Drake. Um, so I, I talked about Drake at the beginning of the live stream. Um, he ended up leaving. I think he's with EXP now, which is like a real estate brokerage. And I think he just was tired of the drama and ready to move on, which was great. So uh, why did Denny leave? Denny left after I was gone. I know, I know from what I had been told she wasn't thrilled with like having to sell products so much like she was having to like d- advertise a lot of like things Pete was selling rather than writing about Disney it became you need to be over selling this product and magic candle company and all these kinds of things which wasn't really what she signed on for and also Denny was a huge fan of the show from what I was told from what I understand she was a huge fan of the show and I don't think she knew how bad Pete was and how poorly he was going to treat her behind the scenes. I remember her being very upset at one point because like Pete yelled at her really badly in front of everybody. And um, I think he just made her life miserable and she was ready to go do something else. So I don't, I don't blame her though for wanting to do that. Um, Yeah. I saw that Eric Gross is working with WDW news today on a moving to Orlando style show. Yeah, I did see that. I heard about it. I mean, I, 
even went and saw the video because they said something had been posted for that. I went to go look at it just to see it. And I could not, I mean, I skipped around, but I don't think I collectively watched more than a minute and a half because I just, the cadence was not speedy for me or something like I, it's not something I would watch but it's very very different than what I would do format wise and all that stuff what we did with moving to Orlando was all the stuff Pete picked out to do and he wanted to run that the same way he ran the Diz and DCL fan in each one that's not really I'm not big on that round table type format it's just Pete demanded the format stay the same and and then everyone was just used to it so not my thing that I would do, but yeah, the, it was it was not something I would want. Um, uh, you did not lose all that weight eating Reese's. Don't fluff. No, 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 I didn't. I I had to stop eating Reese's. So I no, I did not uh, did not get to eat Reese's and lose weight. Uh, what is something you learned about yourself when you look back over the Pete years and experience? Uh, good to see you live, Sean. Thanks. I think the thing I learned about myself is that I am somebody who. I cater to people's needs too much and I step in, I overstep to help people or save people or do whatever who aren't asking for my help. And that's a, a conclusion that I've come to. I mean, all these things with like, you know, Ruben came to work for me at moving to Orlando. He wasn't asking for a job. I approached him and was like, Hey, let me, I, you're going to make a lot of money if you do this. And like, I'm going to rah, rah, rah behind you. And I did that with him. I did that with Danielle and she moved down from Wisconsin. I did that with, I do it with friends. I do it with family. I do it with stuff. And I just try to take on everybody's problems and solve everyone's problems for them. And I'm, I feel guilty when I don't, but it's something I've really had to work through in therapy. And it's something me and my husband talk about a lot. And sometimes he'll have to look at me and he'll say like, Hey, that's not your problem. That that's not your issue. So, and I'm like, yeah, I know, but I'm just trying to help. And he's like, right, but don't help them if they're not asking, because I created and cultivated an environment for myself where now everyone expects me to do things for them. So now I've kind of created my own monster. So now I realize that's something I do, and I'm trying to trying to get better about being a little more watching my own back first rather than everyone else's. Um, the original Disneyland audio show was tremendous. Subsequent versions, not so much. Uh, do you know anything about Addis Car Service? Someone from that company is subpoenaed for Pete's hearing. I don't. Um, I knew Pete was interested in purchasing a car company with me. And I was like, I'm not getting into another business with you. There's no way. But that was FL Tours. So, um, and actually FL Tours is a company that Diz advertises. And Pete helped the owner of that company like he i guess the owner of that company had a second in command or a somebody and pete that that guy essentially approached pete and was like hey if you'll help me get fl tours and like a hostile takeover of some degree was the way pete was describing it to me then i will give you money and cut you in on this i can't remember exactly what the details were so pete did help him like acquire the company from the original owner and then the guy got in there and ran it horribly from what I was told. And then Pete ended up helping the first guy get his business back from the other guy. And then Pete felt so bad about it that he had like screwed over the guy that he like let him advertise on the Diz for free for like forever, like in, in perpetuity or whatever that, Hey, I'll just always leave you as an advertisement on there because I sucked and like, you know, helped help get your company stolen out from under you. So we just felt bad. Uh, what lawsuits are people talking about? Um, we're talking about the uh, million dollar lawsuit that is from um, American Express. Uh, let's see. There seems to be a huge number of people that work for the Diz podcast. What is the pay structure of these folks? It seems like a lot of people to pay. It does seem like a lot of people to pay. That's what, I mean, any, any, um, podcasts or vlogs or anything that I follow, it really seems to just be like one or two people or maybe a third that's a producer. And so we would do like, you know, the Tuesday show where we got like seven people all chiming in on the same stuff and all these people have to be paid. And I just always felt like there was a lot of bloat there for the lack of 
product coming out. And I'm like, how can other vloggers, I mean, even people I follow, uh, I like, I follow one show where the guy will do all his own editing, has his own stuff. He only posts once a week, but it's really high quality with what he does. But there's other people, they post like three or four videos a week and it's just them by themselves doing it or you know, they'll send stuff to uh, a producer, but it may be somebody on Fiverr who's just a few dollars that's a professional editor over in like Bangladesh or something. So like, I, I don't know why. I mean, at one point there was four full-time producers and I'm like, why are there four producers? Like, this is so crazy. Like, I mean, you would think this was like the evening news and there was an actual like business i mean there is a business happening but it, i mean it just it had so many staff members there's so many people that work there um any insight on why craig and rhino would continue to work for what looks like a sinking ship contact is now nearly unwatchable especially compared to other disney influencer channels i have no idea i i always just assumed that they had their reasons and they they i mean they got Craig has a kid and a mortgage and all that stuff. And I'm sure Rhino has his own bills and everything. So like I was saying at the beginning, I think it's just easy to stick with what you know for a while until you're forced into having to do something else. And I think that's part of it. I think maybe they're hoping to get, you know, to right the ship. And if Pete is truly gone or when Pete's truly gone, that things will get better and all that, which I did. I'm guilty of too. I did the same thing with moving to Orlando. I was holding out for the last year and a half that somehow I'd end up back with it and we could rebrand and we could do all these things. And eventually I just had to be like, look, it's not going to happen. Dissolve the thing. I'm just going to, I need to go start something else and let's just completely cut ties. So there's never any looming threat of Pete coming after me. I don't want to wake up one day and my channel shut down or any of the stuff because he secretly had to back way into the moving to Orlando channel or anything like that. So I think that's, I think it's some of that. Um, uh, I, what are the chances in your opinion that Pete makes a comeback? The current Diz Unlimited is rough. Maybe they all say Pete was riddled with addiction and now back from rehab or something. I think the main audience knows enough at this point that I don't see him being able to bounce back from, from this. And I think the, I think he was going to, that probably was the original plan when the lawsuit happened because yeah, it's a million dollars, but he makes a million dollars. He could make that in a year or two to be able to pay the bill back to American express. So I think his mindset more than likely was, I still have my audience. So because I still have my audience, I can, I'm going to be able to bounce back from this. But then once everything came out with me and with Dustin and Jenny Lynn and all the stuff that the audience kind of turned on, it, on him too, then it's like, now he can't get the money quickly. And also he can't get the fans back on board. So I would say it's going to be pretty low of chances that that's going to happen. Uh, how much do you think Pete's ex-husband knew about his behavior and his spending habits? Uh, a lot. Uh, I, I think that he knew everything. I mean, it was his husband. So and they were together for like 11 years. So, uh, but weirdly enough, they, they didn't live together. Like they were mar married because they got like ceremony married, but didn't, it, it, gay marriage wasn't legal. But Pete said they lived together maybe a month or two, I think from what he had said. And then Pete kicked the guy out and was like, I mean, the, the house isn't like that guy's name. So I don't know how you kick somebody out of their own house, but um, Pete kicked him out and bought him a house and was like, hey, go get you another house and I'll just pay the pay the mortgage on that because I can't live with you. So, and as far as I know, they had, Pete would always tell me they had like once a week, they did like date night once a week. But besides that, they like didn't see each other at all or spend very much time together unless it was for uh, a trip abroad where pete was going to like adventures by disney or something like that then walter would accompany him on on those trips um uh yeah never meet your idols uh paul and amy acquiring dvc fan was surprising what are your thoughts on that i don't know if they acquired it i think that dvc resale market acquired it which they don't own it they just work there so i don't know with that, but I mean, I think they do a good job in what it is. Like, I, I, I they really care about DVC, and I think they 
do well with it. I've, I've seen one or two of the episodes and they definitely make a lot of content about a pretty limited product. I mean, DVC doesn't have that many things you can really say as far as it's got to have an inroad it's at some point, but they still pump out ideas of things. So I think, I think they're doing a good job. I don't actively watch, but yeah. Uh, who are some of the Disney vloggers and shows that you like to watch? Uh, I, I've always liked Disney food blog because it's upbeat and peppy and it's all B roll. And there's actually photos of things to look at and stuff. Besides that, I don't really watch anyone particular because uh, most of the time I'm at the park. So I'm there to deal, like do it myself in the morning times, especially if I don't have anything going on, there's a TikTok person that's called like trash cans and Mickey bands, I think. Yeah. Trash bins and Mickey bands or whatever. Magic bands. I don't know if I said Mickey bands. Um, magic bands and trash cans or something. And they do like in park videos. Like he just goes live and walks around the parks. So I will watch that, but it's mostly because I want to see if the park's are busy so i know whether to go or not so that's that's kind of the main reason that i watch those shows but i tend to watch other things and just go to disney and uh but i do like any countdown lists and stuff like ranking top five rides or best and worst kind of stuff like we did with the Diz. then i i like those kind of shows um there's not enough disney news for that many producers that very true. Is Walter still alive? Walter is still alive. And as far as I know, he still lives here in Orlando and he is married. And I met his husband at a dinner and his husband was Walter and Pete's therapist for their marriage. Like he was their marriage counselor. And obviously the marriage didn't work out. And somehow, ironically, two years later, they met back up again, the therapist and Walter, and they ended up getting married as a thing. And it is not lost on me that apparently two years is the statute of limitations on dating your client. So that was what I said. I did ask Pete if he thought there was anything a little suspicious about that. And Pete yelled at me and said that I was um, trying to start drama. So, and I really wasn't, this was a private conversation in the car where I just said, Hey, little strange that, um, you know, your ex-husband is now married to your marriage counselor. So well, I don't, not really sure why there's no alarm bells going off here, but I'm like, okay, maybe I'm cynical. I don't know. So yeah. Um, is ABD really all that it's cracked up to be? I love ABD. I think ABD is a really good product. It's so expensive though. Like you really have to have, you got to have the comfortability money to go do something like that. So it, it's very pricey and, but they do, they do great stuff. I will say the thing with ABD that's the best is getting to do stuff like before things open or after things close. So we did like the tower of London was one of them and you get to go see the, the crown jewels and they're on like one of those moving conveyor belts, like at the airport. And so if you went during the day, you just get on that and you're sliding past random crowns and all this stuff it, it wouldn't me mean anything to me i'd be like oh that's a pretty crown or oh that's a big stone that's a big emerald or whatever but because with abd because it's before the tower opens to the public the things are off and the tour guide takes you through to each one and explains like whose crown it was why it was the way it was like all the history with it so i'm like you know what this has a lot of value for me because i'm getting to experience stuff that normally that would have just been a, yeah, we went to the town, the, we saw the crown jewels, they were pretty cool, or now I can appreciate what they actually were and go from there. The only thing that kind of stressed me out was you have to order like all your meals the first day and you get a menu then. And I'm more of one of those, it's like, ah, like, I don't know if I'm going to want to eat that that day, but like, you do need to go ahead and pre-pick all your meals, which I totally get why, because they, when we only have like an hour gap between events then the food needs to be ready and available and like they need to know what you're going to what you're going to be eating at that point so but yeah abd is great it's just it's very expensive was pete afraid of lashing out at anyone in particular at the diz no no i don't think so yeah there wasn't anybody that he wouldn't like freak out on uh do you know if teresa is still in touch with pete must be awkward working at the diz with being his family i don't know if she's in touch with pete but like i mean she works there as far as i know so 
to some degree, if there was anyone I would bet was having any conversation with Pete, it would be outside of like John, then Teresa probably would be my highest pick, but I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, you may have said it already if you did, sorry, but what happened with Jenny Lynn? Jenny Lynn's actually here. Um, so she's, she's actually in the chat, um, or where Kathy is. She disappeared. I have no idea. I don't know anything with Kathy. So, um, Late joining, so I've already covered. Any idea where Pete is? I have no idea. Um, what is the one number one thing Pete spent money on? I'm thinking about that Amex statement. Um, well, he spent a lot of money on DVC points. So he had like almost, a th I had over a thousand at one point. I think he had like 1300 points. Um, he spent a lot of money on food like eating out at restaurants. I mean, a casual meal for him is going to Capitol Grill, which, I mean, if you go to Capitol Grill, you're dropping minimum $100, a per, $75, I'd say, a person. But he also is somebody who gets appetizer, entree, dessert, press pot. He's also got to do, he loves like doing like tipping 50% of the bill or 100% of the bill and then telling everybody how he tipped 100% of the bill. Like it's a, it's a whole thing. So he, he spends a lot of money. I mean, most of the time, even if just he and I went out for a meal, even to Longhorn, which he really likes Longhorn a lot. So that's, so we went there quite often, but he wants an appetizer and then a salad with the meal and then the whole meal. And he's always got to get like the most expensive steak that's on the menu. And then, you know, diet Coke or Coke zero and, you know, co a coffee at the end, dessert at the end. So, I mean, just him alone is 50 or 60 bucks every time. And then he spends a lot on designer stuff. He's real, as, as you've seen, he's really into his bags. He's really into clothes and, branded things and all that stuff so he he does that and i would say anytime i was there at least four or five times a day an amazon package would arrive so i know he spends a lot of money on on amazon stuff so that's that's probably the big the big few uh, is jackie still with the diz she was so sweet as far as i know uh that yeah as far as i know she still works with the diz i know she lives in washington state now which I, was where she was originally from so i know she moved back to washington state so i think if she is still there she does it like from home which she did anyway because she lived in jacksonville so most of the time she worked from home anyway um must be a trauma bond walter and new spouse it must be because i went to rehab I'm rehab i went to therapy with pete too so Pete wanted me to go to couples therapy with him. And I was talking to the therapist and Pete wouldn't even let me talk to the therapist. Anytime I tried to open my mouth, he would just start yelling over me. And finally the therapist told him, he's like, Pete, like you really need to like let Sean talk. You need to let him have conversation. And the therapist even asked me like, Hey, can I do two separate sessions with y'all? I want to take 30 minutes and talk to Pete. And I want to take 30 minutes and talk to Sean. Pete was having none of it. He did not want me to talk to that therapist about him in the room. And then finally, um, the guy told Pete, he's like, hey, Pete, I think you're being kind of problematic here. Like you're you're not letting Sean talk and all that kind of stuff. So then Pete was like, if you ever tell me that, blah, 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 I'm going to fire you. And so eventually he fired the therapist. So I'm like, here's the thing. and that's And that's why I've said, therapy is not good for everyone. A therapy doesn't work for everyone. I think it's a good idea in general to be like, Hey, yeah, therapy, you should try it. I think you should put, put in the effort. But at the end of the day, if you're somebody that's not honest with yourself, you're not going to be honest to the therapist. And Pete is somebody that he only sees himself as the victim. And he's the most caring person, the most giving person. And everyone's disrespectful for him, to him. And even when you point out like when he's wrong, he just gets mad at you. So, and then fires the therapist. So it's like, yeah, you're now going to therapy with someone that you're paying to reinforce that you're the greatest person that ever lived. And if that's what you're going to do, what's what's the point in going to therapy? So that's, that's why I don't think therapy necessarily is a good fit for everyone. But I think if you're somebody who's honest with yourself, then therapy is very helpful. Was the therapist Kevin? No, I, it, it was not. Um, would you ever join club 33 in Disneyland or Walt Disney world as someone who was in the blogging space, any info you could share? Uh, I don't, I don't think I would join it. It's too expensive for me. And I, I mean, of course, if I was like won the lottery or something, maybe I would, but I don't think I get enough 
value out of it. Oh, I think my dog's coming. Um, but uh, I don't think I get enough value out of it and or would, especially in Disney World. Disneyland, at least there's like the restaurant. Hi, baby. Um, Disneyland, at least there's uh, the restaurant part of it. And you can get drinks and stuff there because you can't at the rest of the Disneyland park. But out here in Florida, I don't, I don't see a lot of value in it. But I do know that if you're somebody... Okay, I know John and Kevin tried to join to become Club 33 members. And because of their association with Pete, I think I remember them saying they got declined from joining because they didn't want too many like vloggers being oh, uh, vloggers being in like Club 33. So that was what I was told at that time. But I don't know for sure. Oh, yeah. Turn, they, they were turned down. Um, I imagine Pete was the same. So, yeah, they, that was the reasoning was, I mean, John and Kevin, I think, had said that they were the people were really on board until they found out what Pete, I mean, uh, what John and Kevin did with the Diz. Cause at first it, sorry, my other dogs here now. Um, but uh, so at first he, they were, they had just said, Oh, we're Disney travel agents and they own the Disney travel agency. So I think that was fine. But then once it became, Oh, and we're associated with vlogs and being on camera and stuff, then that's when Disney was like, Oh no, this is a no go. Like you can't, you can't do that. Um, uh, was Pete married or with John? Yeah. P Pete and John weren't married, but I mean, they started the business together in the late nineties and they were dating all through then. So, um, they, so they definitely were together at the beginning. Do you know what happened with the original DVC sponsorship? I do. Um, it was DVC store and I had told Pete for a while that I thought DVC store, I thought we should try working with Nick Cotton at DVC resale market because they were a much bigger company and they were a bigger brand to work with but the main issue was because we were getting paid six thousand total per month from the dvc store but we were having to do everything like we were essentially having to like run their website i was having to go in once a week like in store like to their actual office and anything we approached and anytime i told them hey i think you should do this to start making more money or to start doing something they were like well that's not the way we do it like and I'm like, I know, and you're having financial, not problems, but you're wanting to build your business and I'm trying to help you do that. And there was little things like they have a storefront, like they, they sell DVC out of a storefront, like over by SeaWorld. And it's like next to Publix. Like there's literally shout out to Publix, but um, there's a Publix and then next door to it is DVC store. And then next door to that is like uh, an aquarium store. And I'm like, who is going to go to Publix and be like, oh, like while I'm here, I should buy, pop in next door and buy a DVC contract. Like, I'm like, you don't need this physical space. And they were signing another lease and it was like 70 grand or something that whenever we were talking about it and I said, well, there's $70,000 you can save right there. And then, you know, everybody could just work from home. So you won't have to spend on the overhead with that. And all that, all those fees, but they were just like, no, we don't want to do that. We don't, we don't want to do it that way. We don't want to do it like that. And I'm like, okay, then I, you're kind of a lost cause. I don't know what to do. And then Nick Cotton came along and he offered like 15 grand a month and we didn't have to do website upkeep and stuff. So the workload was like tremendously less and the pay was a lot bigger. Um, let's see. Uh, this is a mini series in the making. Thanks, Sean. Um, do you think John, Kevin and John really didn't see Pete's toxic behavior? Hard to believe he was so openly rude to his employees. Um, I mean, no, like, I, I mean, there's no way they, I mean, they know, like they know how Pete is. So they, they definitely, they definitely know. Um, I don't, I mean, obviously I don't think they knew to the extent that he was like, drugging and allegedly drugging and raping people or whatever the situation but i do know i do know they know he's a toxic person but yeah the red flag for me on pete's insane spending was the 5k he spent on the drink at the disney wish star wars bar oh god yeah completely i know the only reason he must have done that was to impress um nick and latoya who i who were on the, the sailing with him and i think he just wanted to show like I got money and like, look what I can do and I can afford the five grand. It is also a write-off. So, I mean, he can write it off as a business expense too, but 
I mean, it's it really was a clout thing, and he didn't think twice about it. So yeah. Um, oh, my dog's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yep, got two huskies back there. They're just hanging out, waiting, waiting on me to spend time with them. I guess. Um, I'm surprised they would try to join. Uh, oh, the pup's so cute. Thank you. Yeah, my my dogs are really well behaved. Usually, they they just they kind of lay around. People people always say huskies are like wild and crazy and stuff, and I mine definitely aren't. Um, so I don't I don't know who else is are like that, but yeah. Um, did John and Kevin know about Pete's spending? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely knew about Pete's spending with that because Pete puts it on the company credit card. So like, I mean, so definitely knew in general that, uh, Pete was spending, spending like crazy. Uh, best bet is to express interest via the website. Oh, about joining. Oh, if you know a member, have them put you down for recommendation. Oh, that's how to join, um, club 33. Okay, what are Kevin and John really like off camera? I I never disliked them or anything. I I thought Kevin was funny off camera, and John's like really nice and easy to carry a conversation with. I just thought a lot of times the way Kevin talked to the Disney cast members on the phone was not good, and was really rude. But I never had any negative interactions with them personally one on one, and I feel like we always kept things pretty cordial. I just think they they kind of do their own thing and they run their business. And I was a little bit of a like rabble rouser. I don't know. I don't know what you call that. Like I was a little uh, Norma Ray for them, I guess, where I'm more like, Hey, like people should have rights, you know, to, to not feel like they're getting fired and all that kind of stuff. Whereas everybody kind of just, it, it wasn't my place. So um, Sean Falk, had you said, that Pete was wasting a lot of money gambling on cruises. Uh, he was. Uh, so when we did other cruise lines besides Disney, I mean, he would spend a tremendous amount of money. There was one time it was me, him, my now husband, my now husband's brother, who Pete had become friends with, who lives in Venezuela. And then Ruben from moving to Orlando and his wife, Lexi. So Pete took all of us on a cruise and we, we, on a carnival cruise. And, uh, well, I was going to go, I wanted to go with my friends anyway, but Pete wanted to go. So he's like, if I'm going, I want to pick the ship and all that stuff. And he was like, I'll pay for everybody because I'm the one choosing the stuff. So he did. And I was like, we'll get content for the, for the show. And we went to the steakhouse one night, which I always go to the steakhouse on carnival cruises. Cause it's, it's a really good steakhouse. And we all pooled our dessert credit together to get this thing called the, an, it was like an art painting dessert where they would put the foods and jellies and stuff out. And the chef would come out and paint with like edible paint stuff or whatever, like squashed up berries and all that kind of stuff. And they would paint all over the board. And we were going to get that so Pete could do a video of it. Well, Pete was like, okay, cool. While you order, I'm just going to run out and have a cigarette really quick. I'm like, okay. So we're sitting there and like 15 minutes goes by and then 30 minutes goes by. Meanwhile, the chef keeps coming out with to, to start the presentation. And I keep having to be like, hey, no, 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 I'm so sorry. Like the guy, he's not, he's not back yet. So can you just give us a few more minutes? And they're like, okay, okay. Finally, we sat there until they closed. Like, and Pete's just not responding. They fully closed the restaurant. So finally, they just went ahead and did the presentation. I filmed it on my phone and tried to do it the best I could. And finally, we catch up to Pete and he's in the casino gambling. And we're, I was like, Pete, like we waited on you. It's been it's been like an hour and a half or two hours almost. And he's like, yeah, but I was betting my $100. And um, he, because you could go to the, casino to smoke he's like yeah i was betting my hundred dollars that i bet when i go to smoke and i was like oh you bet a hundred dollars every single time you go smoke and he's like yeah yeah yeah. i'll put a hundred dollars in the slot machine while i'm smoking a cigarette and if i want another cigarette then i gotta put in a hundred more dollars and i'm like but pete you smoked like 30 cigarettes today and he's like yeah 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 i went a little wild today and i'm like yeah that means you've put in like thousands and thousands of dollars into the slot machines and you never win like you're not winning anything so and he's like yeah but that's fun money like to me if i'm gambling it it's money i've already lost so that was his view and he never cashed out like he could be up sometimes he would get up like 
ten or twenty thousand dollars, but then he would just run it into the ground. He'd play until he had nothing left, and he's like, "That's a good time. Like that's that's really fun." So, I don't know. Um, so regarding the Amex suit, do you think John knew about the spending or do you think Pete got the card and charged without John knowing? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, for the most part, John is the person who's like over the finances there. So, I mean, Pete certainly isn't over finances, but that isn't to say that Pete didn't go get another credit card. I know, I know whenever I was around Pete, he did have a, a company American Express card and he had a personal American Express card, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this wasn't a new one. Like maybe he went and got yet another American Express card. So I can't say for sure, but I do know, I do know he had a company card at one point as well. Um, who did you like best and least from the Diz? Uh, well, the least is Charles Boda, but um, the the my favorite. I would. Uh, I really liked Denny because Denny was really really professional, and she always showed up with like all her notes ready to go. She had really thought things through. She looked up how to pronounce things. She looked up prices. So I was like, hey, you know what? She's kind of a spot in here where she clearly comes from a background where you have to be prepared and do a good job at work. Whereas for everyone else, Pete had just fostered this environment of throwing pasta against the wall and see what sticks that everything kind of felt messy by comparison. So I'd say Denny of, of people just based on their work ethic and work effort. I mean, Jackie's like one of the nicest people ever. And then Craig was always like, helpful to me if I ever needed had questions or anything like that. So I, I, I definitely liked them. Um, and then least as Charles Boda. Um, did Erica have dirt on Pete? Not sure why she was hired. Uh, she came on after I was gone. So I don't know anything about her. I think I met her once. She actually did. Uh, I think I met her at maybe festival of the arts last year or something and they were there filming and it was just a very quick hello so as far as i know she doesn't have dirt on on pete um i actually think denny might have been the one that hired her from what i heard but i don't know uh shout out from the uk oh hey um sean is there one lesson or silver lining from all the crud you've had to go through that you can share <laughs> what's the title of your memoir the I don't, I, I, well, one, the silver lining is that I now get to do real estate and I like doing real estate. I've never really knew what I wanted to do with my life or had a passion about it. And it is something that I just like doing. I like selling houses. I like the money you can get from it, but I also enjoy the act of it. And it never feels like too much. It always just feels like a fun job. And there is a lot of freedom in it and a lot of, getting to set your own hours. So I love that. And I doubt I ever would have gotten involved in real estate were it not for this with Pete. And then it does also help that like, you know, I was able to, that led to me being able to get the house I'm in now. So I love, you know, having my house and everything. So it, it did, it did pay for stuff. Part of me does wonder if I, if, if I could go back in time, I don't think I'd do it all again. I don't know that it was worth it to that degree. I think if I just knew what I know now, I would, could maybe make other plans to go better, better paths to, to get to where I'm at. But I certainly wouldn't have gotten involved with Pete. I would have never, I'd have never even spoken to him the first day if I, if I could go back. Um, what's the craziest story you have of Pete? The craziest story. He... <sighs> Let me think. I mean, I've probably told it already, but the, I mean, definitely, I mean, the whole thing with like the Publix woman, that was really like, that was really crazy to me. Cause I'm like, whoa, this is not, oh, uh, he did make me go with him to a, um, tarot card reader one time. And I, so I'm not into like tarot cards or uh, psychics or anything like that. That's just not my, that's not my vibe. And, but Pete loves them. Like he loves having a psychic. He loves having a tarot card reading done. And so he's always looking for a new, a new psychic. And so that he can call if he needs advice or call if he has questions about things. And so we went to New Jersey and he wanted to go to um, this tarot card reader and we got there and I'd never had one done. So we got there and he talked 
to her, she did his reading first and then talked to me after and did my reading and then went to do a reading with us together. And of course, the whole time I'm just sitting there because Pete is just guiding this woman into what he wants the reading to be. Like he's just, any question she has, he's just going into way too much detail. And then she just kind of affirmed everything he said, which was like, Yes, uh, Pete and Sean. Uh, Sean, I see a blue light over you because I can like see other things. I get like I don't know what how that works, but she could see a blue light over me, and that Pete and I were destined to be together, and no matter what, like they were, um, th like we we were always going to end up together in the universe, and, and no matter how many lives we have, we'll always end up being together, and all this stuff, which of course just made Pete really really thrilled. And then she gave us a rock, like it was like a stone and it was some kind of like wishing rock that you would keep on you at all times. And Pete was like, oh, I want you to keep your rock on you and I'm going to keep my rock on me and all that stuff. I was like, this is like the weirdest thing, but I've never been around tarot card people before. And he really, really, I mean, he really believes in it. Like, I mean, and sorry to anybody who does too, but yeah, but it's, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it, that, that was a weird one for me. Um, get out your mommy's bedroom, dude. I don't, I don't know what that means. Um, uh, yeah, just look up Charles with that. I had went into that already. Um, have you seen Mary from Publix again? And was the Thanksgiving at his house as epic as he made it sound? Um, um, so no, I was thinking about that, that the other day. So I had only seen her a time or two and not to burst anybody's bubble. Her name's actually not Mary. Um, I just said Mary as a filler name because I didn't want anybody that happened to go there and like ran into her or something to like tell her anything. So she's not actually named Mary, but um, that would be by his store, like by his house. So I don't go to that Publix. So I go to, I go to my Publix, but we, no, I haven't. I've not run into her anymore, but I will say the Thanksgiving parties were really good though. The food, incredible. Like he really, really, uh, Puff and Stuff was the caterer and they did a really good job. They're very expensive uh, from what I can tell. I don't get catering done a lot, so I don't know, but they were expensive, but he, he definitely had a good job um with them and i always felt bad because of course he would have them do catering like christmas and thanksgiving and stuff and then he would always apologize to, or not apologize he would always tell them like yeah i'm so sorry you guys got to work on the holidays that must be so awful and it's like but you're hiring them like if you didn't hire them then you then they wouldn't be here like right now like you are the one keeping them from their family so and all of us from our families so because who wants to get up on christmas morning and go to your house like it's just not it's ridiculous um i wonder if pete still has the stop it rock i'm assuming he does he didn't stop it but he he didn't listen to it if he did if he does have it the he uh i, I don't know i did see that clip and i wanted to see what in the world that was about but he was telling about the stop it rock and i just i didn't get it he lost me in that one uh why do you think we are so intrigued by pete even now i think he's a he's a i mean he's a chaotic figure but i think he's somebody that people he just came around at the right time and people you know got obsessed with the Diz and they liked it. And I think he was the first person to really be critical of Disney too, in a big way. And he was saying what a lot of people were thinking. I mean, he does have sound advice sometimes. I think sometimes it just spirals out of control, but a lot of the Disney content people, they are too passing of Disney stuff. Whereas there are negative things that Disney does. And sometimes it is fair to call them out. I think, I always wished he would call them out in a different way, but I mean, people like that. I mean, people like, Hey, he's completely unfiltered and raw and Pete liked doing his rants and people responded to his rants. And I think they just don't think of, um, I don't think of them. They ever think about the rant being directed at themselves and how it is, but I always felt really bad for, um, uh, Terry. I can't remember her name. Schultz. 
Um, so, but like with her, where he just would like go on and on and on ranting on her. And I'm like, I mean, we don't even know the ins and outs of her job. Like we don't know exactly what the woman does or we don't know exactly what each person does. So with, within the Disney company. So I don't know. Um, I, I don't know with that, but he, he just was too much. Um, oh, wow. Now I need to go to the Publix on Colonial. And that's why I use the name Mary. So that was that. What's Pete doing now? I have no idea. Uh, the after rehab video. So self-indulgent. I know. Yeah, I saw that one. And I, I think that's like the second or third episode of the Diz I ever saw. But somebody said he was coming back. And I was like, okay, I got to see like, I just got to see it. Like, I got I to gotta see what happened with the rehab because I don't know. Was he rude to the cast members? I just remember on on one of his DVC stays, he looked like a terror. Um, he wasn't rude to the cast members in general, but he was always rude to the waiters at the restaurants. It, it, whether we were doing a dining review or not doing a dining review, if we were just casually there, he was always so mean to the waiters. But he is at every restaurant. like So he's, he's always rude to wait staff. And it would bug me and it would really stress me out. But he would just be like wanting salt all the time or wanting something all the time. And if something was forgotten, he was just really, really vicious towards them. And, or even just little things. Like if he got a steak and then was like, yeah, there's, oh my God, are you okay? Um, but uh, so like if he got a steak and there was no Bernays sauce, which I never even had Bernays, I, that was nothing I ever knew of. And they or like lobster and they didn't bring the the drawn butter. But to him, it could have just not been on the plate when they when the food was brought out by a food runner. And then the waiter pops in and was like, oh, like, how's your food? And he's like, who, who doesn't serve butter with lobster? What kind of place doesn't serve butter with lobster? My God, like, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, I'll go get you some didn't know you needed any like that that kind of stuff so it just made the server feel really uncomfortable a lot of the time and then we would feel uncomfortable with watching the whole experience break down so it just wasn't he's that that was probably the rudest he ever gets to to people at disney uh what do you think the dish should do moving forward pack it up rebrand new personalities i don't know i think they i I might pack it up, but they do still make a lot of money on the travel agency side. I really think they just need to direct the show more so as a travel agency show. Like this is how you book a Disney vacation. This is how, and then be like, oh, and if you don't want to do those things, we can do all these things for you and really gear more towards cost saving tips and, you know, money spend type stuff. Cause then it makes it like, and you're going to get this level of service when you go with one of our amazing travel agents. So I don't really know why they're not showing how their expertise in Disney and it's more so kind of gossiping about the news more so. I mean, it's, and there's a place for that, but I do think that if the ultimate goal for them is to make money and that is their ultimate goal with dreams unlimited that's the bulk of where the money comes from then you need to kind of go there whereas if you're like disney food blog and you don't have those direct channels yourself then yeah you're working with sponsors so you do just want most eyes on videos as many as you can get no different than what we would do a move into orlando i ne i never needed a lot of views i needed buyers and that's the thing so with the diz they really don't need views they need people to buy with dreams unlimited travel and by comparison to somebody else like Molly who does Mammoth Club, like I don't think she has anything like that. So I think hers is more about branding deals with people. And so you need eyes on you to get more money to do that stuff. So that that would be my what my my my, my go-to. Um, what are the names of your cute pups? Uh so the black one is Roy, and then the red one is Ike, but Ike's kind of like over here right now. The long-haired one's Ike. So Roy and Ike are my are my two. They're both rescues. So they're uh, I I do uh, there's a place called Husky Haven here in Orlando. And so I adopted both from them and they're a really great charity organization for for rehoming dogs. They're they're really good. Um for the record, I would not go see Mary. I don't think you would, but yeah, I, I just think there's people out there who are 
they're, they do some crazy stuff. Rude to wait staff. What a douche when he talks about tipping 60%. I do. I, I've talked about it before. I think in my last live, I think he does think he's a very good customer because he tips well. So he kind of runs them ragged and then tips well, but he's the same way with people that are his employees or whether he's dating you or whatever. I mean, he's mean to you, runs you ragged is treats you like crap, talks down to you the whole time. And then makes up for it with a big grand gesture. And whereas like for me, like one of the things with me was uh, one year for my birthday, we were on it. He and I were on a Disney cruise, not on my birthday. It was the next month. And he said, um, Oh, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, Oh, well for my birthday, I want to go to Dollywood. And, Cause I love Dollywood. And I said, well, for my birthday, I want to go to Dollywood. Pete had never been. And I said, my, since my family lives in Tennessee, they could drive up and I want to rent like a big cabin, like a three or four bedroom cabin. And we can all spend the time together. So Pete was like, yeah, let's do that. We'll have your family up and we'll, and I'll book them a cabin and I'll book you and I a cabin and we'll just see them when we see them. And I told him, I was like, well, Pete, like I'd be kind of uncomfortable with that because I know how you are. You're if I was with my family too much, you're going to want me at the cabin with you all the time. So there's really no point in my family going because I'm not going to be able to see them for my birthday. And he was like, so what do you want to happen? I was like, well, I was hoping to just get one big one. And like, would you not want to spend the time with my family? Like, is there a problem with that? And he's like, no, 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 no. Like, I that's totally fine. Yeah, let's do that go to bed. And then I wake up the next morning and Pete, while I was asleep, went downstairs and bought me a DVC contract for Alani for my birthday. Like, Hey, decided, Hey, instead of the thing you asked for, for your birthday, I bought you this as a, as a, as a gesture, we just need your signature. So like I end up going up and putting my signature on the thing as a thing, but it would get very like, Hey, he just kind of does these extreme things, which of course, when I was telling him, Oh, I wanted to go to the cabin, it started this huge fight and we ended up fighting all day and all night. And I'm like, Pete, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I suggested this. You asked what I wanted for my birthday. I'm apologizing to you for assuming that you would be okay staying in a cabin with my family. Like, I, I don't know, like, I don't know what to tell you. And that kind of spiraled from there. So then the next day, I guess he had a moment of guilt and was like, cool, why don't I just buy him a $40,000 DVC contract? And like, that's going to be your gift now. So he kind of does that with wait staff too, where it's like, he treated them bad. And I think at the end, he's like, well, I tipped them 100%. So it makes up for everything. Um, uh, do you think Dreams Unlimited saw a decline in sales after all of Pete's shenanigans came to light? I've heard they did. Um, I, I heard from one of the agents that there was a lot less people in their queue line to get quotes. So I do think it hurt to a degree. I don't know to what extent that it did, but I, I know definitely they took some kind of hit there. Sean, did anyone else reach out to you to threaten or disparage you like that one dreams agent? No, no one else did. Anyone else who's reached out was like really nice about everything and said, Hey, I'm glad you're, you, I'm glad you're helping bring things to light and I'm glad you're doing this. So pe people have been really supportive. Uh, you're from Tennessee. I have family in Morristown. Yeah. I'm from a place called Savannah, which is like literally in the middle of nowhere. And it's like not by anything. It's three hours of a drive to the airport. It's there's only maybe a thousand people that live it, like I'm not in I didn't live in the town. Like so the, it, it's a very, very rural to say the least. Do you still own that DVC? I do own that DVC. Uh, I have my Alani contract. Pete, of course, paid it in payments. And then for my birthday, got me that paid it in payments. It's in my name and then stuck me with the bill. So I actually ended up having to pay for the DVC contract myself anyway. So I bought my own birthday gift. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, he's, yeah, I can't believe he bought you a DVC and then stuck you with the fees. He did. He, he stuck me not just with the yearly fees, which is fine. It's like 1200 bucks a year or something like that. But I mean, he I literally ended up having to buy... I would say I paid for at least half of the contract myself because he did the initial down payment and then he would float back and forth paying the bill. Sometimes if he was mad at me, then he would stick me with the bill. So that was, that was what happened. Uh, 
uh, we bought an 11 acre farm in Jefferson County, Tennessee, about 30 minutes from Dollywood. Love Dollywood in the Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg area. Yeah, it's really nice. People ask me all the time um, if I were going to buy a Airbnb or like buy another investment property, where where would I buy one if not in Orlando? And Pigeon Forge is pretty much always on my on my top list there. It's gotten really expensive to purchase real estate there, but the the benefit and the value that you get, because the, I mean, they stay rented. Those cabins, like if you can get one of those, like, like you're good. So there's a really good one. And then um, probably the panhandle of Florida, I would say somewhere in there would be a good option too, because you want, like, if you do get into it with ever buying a short-term rental property or something, it's great to have those areas because people from the South, especially they're used to driving long distances, like the South and the Midwest. They're used to driving a long way to get somewhere because the States are so big and a lot of people don't have immediate airport access, but they're also very loyal in where they stay because a lot of people from the South and from the Midwest, they're like, yeah, every year we go to Daytona beach and we rent the same unit. And the minute we leave, we book it again for the next year. They go the same time and it's very regimented. So once you get clients like that, that are in those locations, like Pigeon Forge, you're going to have people driving from Myrtle Beach. They're going to drive from Ohio, Pennsylvania, further out west, further Arkansas, that kind of stuff. And they book the same cabin every year, same week, same thing. Whereas I think people out west and in the northeast tend to mix it up a little bit more with their with their vacations. So you they, they're not going to drive to those locations anyway. They usually go places they can fly to because they're used to being able to get from like, you know, New York City to Baltimore on public transit or whatever, if they had to. So I, th I think that's a tendency of that. Um, did anyone on the current show reach out to you? No, not that I know, not that I can think of. I mean, Craig did at first, but um, uh, we, we, I mean, just to kind of be like, Hey, I just didn't know this stuff was going on. And like, I'm really sorry about what you'd posted, but besides that, not, not really. Um, you mentioned the move into Orlando legal stuff was recently settled. Did you have contact with Pete during that process? No, I didn't. Um, Ruben and R my husband, Roz, like, were the owners and they, any contact was happening with Pete was happening from Ruben to Pete. And that was just kind of the path that they took. But I mean, by that point, all this drama was out because I think it officially dissolved actually in... Uh, October, November. So it's been a couple months and then we've got our studio ready and got it all prepared and set up. And then I did have clients and with the holidays, I definitely didn't want to start posting videos during December. Cause I'm like, there's no, but the real estate market's pretty slow uh, during December, but now rates kind of drop down a bit. So, and things, prices are getting a little more reasonable. So the, the market's really picking up a lot more here. And people always ask, they're like, oh, like, you know, I'm waiting for the rates to go down. And I'm like, and so is everybody. So like, and then now they do. And then everybody reenters the market at the same time. So you're just kind of, kind of waiting. Uh, will you be posting on this channel? Uh, no, I won't be using this channel. So that was part of the initial issue that I did with the YouTube algorithms and um, so when I posted my first video on Tattle, where I was like, I'm, I did this on Tattle and I'm leaving, moving to Orlando because I'm moving and starting my own channel and stuff. At that time, it felt like a good idea to start a new channel and then post that video as my start. But I think it gave YouTube the wrong impression of what the channel was. Whereas I, I did that, it got a ton of subscribers and people followed and they were very supportive. And then all of a sudden I start posting real estate content and YouTube sees it as like, no, no, no. But if you post this content, it'll get a lot of views. Your real estate content doesn't get as many views. So like this, like do this. So I think YouTube's algorithm maybe sees that the channel does really well if it's like, a gossip drama channel and that kind of thing versus it being a real estate channel. So that's why with this, I now got a new channel and was like, Hey, this is just for like Q and a situation. Cause I don't want to meddle the, the real estate channel any further. Uh, I still watch the DVC fan show. DVC fan show and only random did stuff in the parks. If it's mostly Rhino, uh, I joined late and apologies were asked, uh, do we know where Pete is? We don't know where Pete is. 
Um, Sean, what would justice look like? Criminal acts and civil suits, in your opinion, when you think of Pete? Uh, Pete? So, I mean, I'll, I'll say, I've been, I've been pretty open in what I've had to say. So one of the biggest things that I finally, Pete, pushed out of me to that point, and I sh shouldn't have said it, but I didn't mean it as bad. But um, he had just got driven to a point where I sat down and I talked to him and he was just like, I don't know, like we're just fighting all the time. And what do you think of me and all these kinds of things? And this was like, after he and I were no longer together, he was frustrating me and pushed me to the end. And I did tell him, I said, Pete, there is going to come a day that you're going to die. And a lot of people's lives are going to be a lot better. And he was really, really upset when I said it. And then of course he spun it as I was like wishing death on him and saying like, you know, he should kill himself or whatever. And I was like, Pete, that isn't what I said. What I said was someday you're not going to exist anymore. And a lot of people that are stuck under your thumb, like me and other people are going to be relieved because they don't have to deal with you anymore. So obviously, I mean, it was a horrible thing for me to say, and I wish that I wouldn't have said it. And, but I didn't mean it in contextually. I just more so meant it as like, you're hurting a lot of people, but it, it wasn't, taken that way at all and then from then on it became oh sean wished death on me as a thing and i was like that wasn't really what i was doing it was this other thing like i didn't mean it in that way but i should have just never said it but i he just oh like he just pushed me so hard with that so i don't think any i, I don't know that there is justice to look like anything I, I don't pete's really big into karma so he's a big like karma fan and he believes very heavily in that and if that's what he believes in then i guess what goes around comes around eventually but i i can't think of anything specific that he would happen as far as justice there's nothing i want to happen to him i just don't want him to be able to terrorize people anymore and that is essentially what he does is terrorize people and it's kind of a burden off everyone at that point um, you mentioned EXP Realty. Do you have an opinion of that about that company? I joined EXP. They're crazy. Like I did not. I mean, allegedly on my opinion, not to defame anybody. But um, yeah, that place. I'm not a. I'm not an EXP fan. Like that is not my. That is not my cup of tea. I don't ever intend on going back with EXP. Um, it's a very odd platform of like. It, I mean, it sounds like a like a pyramid scheme, but I, I, it's not, I know it isn't a pyramid scheme. It is just one of those things where the people at the top bring, uh, that's pretty much what they're doing. It's just, they do a lot of recruitment. Like that's really their big thing. And it was fine whenever I joined them. And I thought that I thought they were in on it too. Like I thought they knew how crazy it all was. Cause like they would tell me, they're like, we're going to help you print the roadmap and find your North star was like their thing. And I'm like, okay, but like now that we're in private, like, what, what do y'all really do? And they're like, we're going to help you find your North star. Like, this is what we do. And I'm like, Oh, you like hype people up in this way. Like a cult. like, okay, I get it now. Like, this is weird. So then I was like, okay, I got to get out of here. Like, this is not, this is not my thing. So not that they're a cult or do, they're not doing anything bad or illegal. As far as I know, it's just not the brokerage for me. Does Pete know you shared your, your story publicly? I've heard that he's been told, um, I'm assuming he knows by this point. You mentioned that you reached out to John to apologize. Did he ever reply? Nope, he did not reply. I never heard anything from John at all. Um, do we know if Pete's mom is still with us? I hope she's been insulated from his toxicity coming to the surface. As far as I know, she's alive and well and around. I don't know. I know usually for her birthday every year, which is in December, he takes her because their birthdays are like a couple days apart. So Pete would always do like a joint birthday thing for him and his mom. And he would take her to candlelight processional to have dinner or have lunch at Rosen crown. And then they would go to candlelight processional. I'm guessing that didn't happen this year, but I don't know. Like I, I, I don't necessarily know that he didn't take her this year, but I would guess. And I would bet that he's not been back in the parks, but I know that was a big yearly tradition for them. And that was what he did for his mom. Uh, was Pete actually good to his mom or was that just for show? I think he was good to her. I mean, she's, 
she's such a quiet person and stuff, but I mean, he, he did always take care of her. He paid, you know, he bought her, her place that she stayed and made sure that she, her, you know, her car was paid for and he, he really upkept her, her lifestyle. So, I mean, which she doesn't live lavishly or anything anyway. So yeah, she's, but she's a really nice person. They both were wearing the glasses with the nose attached and the mustache. Yeah. I think trying to, if they did go, they were they were trying to keep well well hidden, I would assume. But I would imagine he's trying to keep his mom as far away from any of this drama as much as possible because she is so much older and he he wouldn't want to um you know upset her in that way. I mean, she's like 95 or something. So of course, you know, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't help her situation and her, her living condition right now, but she seems to be alive and well and seems to be doing good. So I, I, as far as I know, does Pete have siblings? He does. Um, he has four or five siblings, I believe. I can't remember. He has two, he has two adopted siblings and then he has three by blood. He has an older sister who passed away and then an older brother and older sister. But I think, and some of them work for the company. I think his oldest sister works for the company. And then his adopted sister is one of the agents with moving to Orlando. I mean, with uh, Dreams, I think. Uh, oh, Sean, you're so articulate. Thank you for your honesty and transparency. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, if you were to run into Pete randomly, what would you say or do? I actually did randomly run into Pete and I knew he was coming before he even got there because I could smell his cologne because he wears a very distinct cologne. So I knew he was around and I knew he was somewhere close by and I completely just went the other way. I don't know what I would do. I think I'd always thought like if I ever ran into him, like I would just ignore him would be the easiest thing to do and it probably still is the easiest thing but i can't say if he started trying to talk to me or anything that i wouldn't just like cuss him out or something at this point because i yeah might as well like you know i might as well get the show on the road and do that but um that was sorry if you hear noise it's the fireworks going off um uh yeah wear garlic and carry a cross i'd have to just to just to be around. Um, I'll answer a couple more things and I'll go because it's like two and a half hours or something. Uh, that we're two hours and 15 minutes. So I thought the last one went really long. <laughs> and then this one's already gone longer than that one did at this point. Um, so if anyone has any any last stuff that was it clarified or whatever, I mean, uh, then just to reiterate, I'm not like, uh, like I'm not, a lawyer i so i don't know specifically like what's happening with any of this stuff it's just that's just what i have observed in my time through my lived experience um being ignored would probably be the hardest thing for him to take it it really would be um did pete have any redeeming qualities he did um he he what like i was saying earlier i mean he was somebody that would could be a good friend to somebody if he would let himself be a good friend. Like if he, if he didn't, if he wasn't trying to buy you all the time, he actually could be a caring person. And cause he does try with that stuff. And he does seem to be somebody who just wants to be loved and cared about. And it's, but it's just like some, what it's like the, the, the switch goes off in his head where he's just like, okay. And now like, you're not good to me. Like I want you in this moment to be this way. And, and I think once he does that, it just off puts people to what, to what he is. But yeah, I mean, it's no. Um, uh, did anyone ever call out Charles for being a pretentious chode? Uh, I did. Um, but we didn't get along anyway. So uh, we, we had a rocky relationship at best. Um, have you spoken with Dustin recently? I haven't spoke to Dustin recently. I was, uh, I had a layover when I was on my way back from Japan a few months ago and I had an overnight layover in New York City. So we were making plans at one point to meet up and I ended up changing my flight. So I wasn't able to, to meet up with him. So that would have been the last time we spoke. So that'd have been August or September, I would say. Yeah. Some, somewhere in there. Oh, thank you, Liesl. 
Um, so Pete doesn't do anything Disney anymore. Does he work anywhere now? And is he still married? Uh, he, w he wasn't married. He was engaged, but he's not engaged anymore. As far as I know, Pete doesn't do anything with Disney. And the he's never worked anywhere else. I mean, he, when, I guess in the last 20 plus years, he's just always done this. So I don't really think he has anything financially going on outside of this um what comes to your mind when you hear about pakistan i they have a green flag with a crescent moon on it i don't know that's about i know they don't like india um so uh does pete have any real friends i would i'd say no like i don't think he knows how to be a good friend i think he does actually there is a there is a real estate agent uh, that I do know is his real friend. I cannot think of her name. Um, but yeah, so I think she's somebody who actually is his friend, but a lot of times they're people from like AA and that kind of stuff. And they, they're more sympathetic, I would say, because they also come from a, a rough background too. Um, so I, I would say she is, and I, God, I cannot think of her name for some reason. Um, but yeah, so I, I'd say her, the, her, whatever her name is, <laughs> I, I can't think of it now. Um, uh, what's that next for you professionally? How can we follow along and support? Um, so next is, is getting back into real estate YouTube stuff. Um, not to, I don't really want to be too much in the Disney sector. I, speaking of Eric with news today, um, I have had people reach out about me doing that with their Disney channel or sponsoring and doing that kind of stuff. I think I just don't, I think being too close to the Disney realm and the Disney bubble in that way makes me, um, makes me not appreciate the parks as much. And it is something I can honestly say people ask like, Oh, is it hard to live here and live so close to Disney and not get bored with the parks? And no, yeah, it is really hard to do that. Like it's very difficult to live here and still love going to the parks. So what love I still have for going to the parks, I want to keep it and not be, not be constantly there and having my mindset have to be, filming something or videoing something and even we're, we're we might do a little bit of disney content but it's really gonna be more of like these are fun ways we as locals so after you've moved to the orlando area then this is kind of your relationship and this is how things work with going to disney because it's just it's not the same it's i mean i loved those times when i lived far away and you flew in and you rode the magical express and then you know you hung out with your family and your friends like on the way to the park on the way to magic kingdom in the morning and all that stuff it's you don't get that anymore but you do get that fun sense of like okay i'm just gonna drive to epcot after i'm done working for the day and we're gonna have dinner or i'm gonna go to animal kingdom and i don't have to be there for if the if the line is super long for a certain ride i can come back tomorrow i can come back another day and go do the fun stuff i want to do whereas on vacation you really feel like you got to pack it all in so i would say um uh that's that's where i'm headed and i don't have too much interest in keeping it with the disney side of things i do still want to help people move specifically for disney and to this area but i don't think i want to be involved with like a disney vlog of something um i is peter real man i i mean le legally i guess i don't know like technically speaking yes um what's one final thought you have to sum up what you have learned from this and thank you um i think i've just learned like people people are very complicated and it's I've, I've always been somebody who just saw stuff as black and white and things had to be black and white or things had to be you know a certain way about them and it's they really don't and um, people there's so many nuances with people where some people are difficult for a time or difficult at a point in their life and it makes it a lot easier easier to judge them for like what you see which that is what they're presenting but it's a thing when you get behind the curtain and you see okay a lot more goes into this than expected it kind of gives you a little more grace with people like even when i started first started reading the stuff on tattle that was critical of me um i it stung when i first read it but then i was like you know it's stuff i kind of had a gut feeling already and i knew but then some of it it's like 
hard because you just want to get on and respond and you want to defend yourself because you want to be liked by people. You don't, you don't want to be disliked or anything at all, but you have to start looking at yourself as more of a character, I suppose, where it's like, Hey, you know what? These people really don't know me. I mean, they don't know who I am. They don't know who I, what, what, what my real values are and all these things. And so I can just kind of keep it light more so. And then, so I think that's maybe what I've learned is keeping things lighter and maybe having a little more, grace and forgiveness with people because maybe they're just in a bad spot at that time in their life and how maybe be a little more supportive while also watching watching out for yourself too um where can we find the charles story i don't know on tattle i thought i addressed it in the last live that i did that i had talked about it but i'm 99 percent sure it's in that um i hate that pete turned out to be a creep but i also hate the Diz now without him uh there to run the ship john and kevin may as well be a thousand years old and the crew now is men um i i agree with that i mean pete is the diz i mean he does make up the diz and i, I didn't really get the name change um because my husband was asking me about it the other day and i said oh yeah um i said they did change the name but it's almost like when pixar got rid of john lassiter they didn't even yeah pixar i mean john lassiter helped start the company he was director he was so heavily associated but i mean when he left and they got rid of him they didn't change the name of pixar like to something else because they're like we just it's still pixar people know the brand and they want to be with the brand but for me changing to diz unlimited it's so close to the other one that it's almost like either do a hard rebrand and name it something completely different or just keep the name and be like hey we got rid of the person but like we're keeping we're, the store is still going to be called the same thing. The show is still going to be called the same thing. I mean, it, it still is that, but, or if you're going to do it and like kill off Roseanne, you change it to the Connors or something, then yeah, you can, you can do it that way. But it's like, if they named it Rose, Roseanne with like a hyphen in the middle or something like Roseanne question mark or something, then it's like, okay, like I, the branding's there, I get it. But like, why, why is it so similar as a thing? um what was the reason fiasco left uh, i actually addressed it at the beginning of the video here um so it should be about 10 minutes in maybe uh, if you come to philly again love to hook up for a drink and cheesecake uh, i will actually be leaving for philly in two days um so i will be up in philly because my friends and i uh go to wildwood this time of year which I know sounds like a terrible time to go to Wildwood, but it, it, it is for like, if you want to go to the beach, but I don't need to go to the beach because I live here. So they have a house up there and we all get together and do um, murder mystery parties. And so we try to do that once a year, maybe not all the time, but um, since COVID, we've not been able to get together to do one. So um, we do murder mystery parties and we get together and play uh, a lot of board games and video games and all that kind of stuff together i'm a really 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 big fan of villainous like the disney board game so and luckily one of my friends got me on villainous and then now my husband plays and then all my several of my friends now i keep like slowly like getting them addicted to villainous too so now uh now a lot of people are on the villainous train so i'll be up there in philly for about a week do, uh, doing that uh and then after i'm back it's all hands on deck for for getting to work on everything. So I had another trip planned actually to Australia. I was supposed to be going to Australia at the end of this month or at the end of February um, for a few weeks. And I canceled that just cause I'm like, I need to, it was all of that stuff. And like was planned back when I had agents to help me and all that. But now that I'm solo, I'm like, I don't have time to do that kind of stuff and go on trips like that. So um, that had to go out the window. And so I sold my, I was going to see Taylor Swift. So I sold those tickets um, to, for the, for the Sydney show and all that. So um, did, I did get all that done, but yeah, no, but like, a lot of people do watch from Philly. So Philly and New Jersey are probably the big, big area. So when I go, I stay in an area called Deptford or Glassboro, which is South Jersey. So that tends to be the area that I stay in. And if anybody is in Philly, there's actually a really good escape room in Philly. If you're from that area. So if that's one of my favorite escape rooms. So if you are, and you need to know what it is. I can't think of the name of it offhand, but it's uh, 
um, if somebody DMs me and really wants to know the information, I can I can find out. But yeah, that's it. There's there, there's a really good stuff. Love going to the Franklin Institute and all that when they pa- do their new uh, whatever exhibit their displays and all that. So yeah, all that's really great. But um, yeah, it looks like we're coming up on the two and a half hour mark. So I'll probably go from here. But thank you to everybody who took time to sit with me for two and a half hours and listen to me talk and ramble on about my drama from the past. And everyone's been really supportive. Everyone's been, um, yeah, stay away from Ocean Grove. When you go to New Jersey, I would, yeah, I better. Uh, um, But they, yeah, so thanks to everybody who's always been supportive and allowed me to be cathartic and get all this off my chest and all that kind of stuff. And if you ever want to buy a house or if you need a home loan originated, feel free to reach out to me because I will definitely write your loan for your house or give advice on like buying a house or whatever it is you need to do. So anyway, that'll do it. Um, Feel free, reach out if you ever have other questions or whatever. And I may do another one of these in less time than six months. So hopefully, hopefully I do. Um, Have you visited Disney 100 in Philly? No, I haven't actually. So I was thinking that may end up being something we do one of the days because my friends are really big Disney fans, like from the college program and all that. So yeah, awesome. Well, thank you everyone. And I'll see you next time.